to the public. If you wish to address the council, please complete the public wish to address the council form located at the end of the counter and please give it to the council clerk as soon as possible. All public comments must be addressed to the council as a whole and addressing individual council members or staff is not allowed. Speakers should be courteous in their choice of words or actions and comments should be limited to the issue and cannot involve individual or staff related matters. Thank you. All cell phones, pagers, and electronic devices used for communication should be silenced for the duration of the meeting. I'd like to call the meeting to order of the Terrebonne Parish Council Wednesday, April 27th, and uh, ask Mr. Dirk Guidry if you could lead us in a prayer followed by a pledge. Loving and gracious God, help us keep the common good before us, strengthen our gifts of wisdom, courage, and respect for the views of others. Strengthen us to continue to work with our leaders, seeking an ever more just society that acts in harmony and interdependence with all creation. In the name of Jesus, in union with your spirit, amen. 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 I pledge my allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Hampton, roll call. Mr. Harding. Here. Mr. Michel? Here. Mr. Amade? Here. Mrs. Domain? Here. Mr. Darren Guidry? Here. Mr. Babin? Here. Mr. Dirk Guidry? Here. Mr. Trosclair? Here. Mr. Navy? Uh, Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum present. Approved minutes of the regular council session held on March 23rd, 2022. Move, move Mr. Dirk Guidry, second to Mr. John Amade. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any oppose? Minutes are approved. Distribute minutes of the regular council session held on April 13th, 2022, which we've done. Approve accounts payable bill list for April 18th, 2022 and April 25th of 2022. Move, Move Mr. Steve Trosclair, second of Mr. John Amity. All in favor say aye. aye. Any oppose? Approve manual checklist March 2022. Move, Move Mr. Steve Trosclair, second of Mr. Carl Harding. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Manual checklist is approved. General business, presentation by parish administration relative to capital projects, including drainage, utility road and quality of life projects, as well as other matters related to the operation and maintenance of parish government. Mr. Toops, are you gonna yes, give sir. that in behalf of administration? Uh, thank you, Chairman Jer uh, Guidry. Uh, two weeks ago, President Dove gave a, a very extensive uh, report on a multitude of projects, and it took about 30, 35 minutes. So what he uh, decided to do was every council meeting, we were gonna highlight one particular project and bring the council and the general public up to date on where we are with that project, where we stand and uh, what's going on. So this week, uh, Ms. Tammy, if you can put the slides up, uh, we decided to um, talk about the uh, LaCorp drainage project uh, this is a project that, um, uh, if you notice, next to the Popeyes on Tunnel Boulevard, we've already dug a retention pond. And um, the retention pond is about uh, 110 feet by 220 feet, and it averages about six or seven foot deep. It holds roughly a million plus gallons of water, and we've already tied the culverts into the retention pond and we have gotten reports from the residents in the area that it's already helped uh, the drainage improvements. But the plans are this, this will help the, all the residents on the areas around Leveron Street, Rudier, Nakan, Columbus, Railroad Avenue, Barataria Street, all the way no north on Tunnel, all the way to uh, the Barca, uh, Kia, and, and Mazda dealerships. Uh, this is roughly a, a seven million dollar project, all inclusive. That includes the um, the engineering, the construction, the permits, and uh, all the uh, land right of ways. We own most of the property, so there will ver be very little land acquisition. If you look at the drawing, the um, the red lines are the new culverts, and the blue dotted lines or the existing culverts. We plan on jack and boring underneath Tunnel Boulevard right next to the Popeyes. And uh, we're gonna go all the way uh, to Highway 311. 
where we are gonna uh, put the new pump station. The uh, new pump station consists of two 42 inch, um, next slide please, oh, thank you. Yeah, the, uh, the pump station consists of two of the um, hybrid electric diesel over hydraulic uh, power packs that we've, uh, similar to the ones we have on St. Louis Canal Road. Uh, they primarily run on electrical power, but if the electricity goes off, it automatically transfers to the uh, diesel power mode. We will have a small emergency generator to control the, um, the variable frequency drive and all of the uh, SCADA equipment in the building. Uh, the, um, the bottom of the sump is at a minus 16 foot and if you notice on the drawing, the uh, culvert feeding the pump station is some eight and a half foot diameter culverts. So it's, it's a very um, much needed project. It's long overdue. And um, we're in the engineering phase right now. We are approximately 80% complete with the uh, engineering. Uh, this is a little bit more in detail, showing where the culverts cross tunnel. And then if you notice the, the blue area is the uh, retention pond right next to the Popeyes. This is a picture of the actual retention pond itself. It's uh, at a minus four on the side closest to tunnel to a minus uh, 10 on the far side. And of course you can see we had to dig around some very old uh, cypress stumps. This is again another view showing all the various sizes of the uh, culverts that we're gonna have to install in the ground. And of course there will be catch basins uh, strategically placed to, uh, to catch all the drainage. This shows the, um, the location of the pump station itself in, in, in relation to Highway 311. The uh, discharge is gonna go underneath Highway 311 into Little Bayou Black. Little Bayou Black ties into Big Bayou Black and then Big Bayou Black, as you know, empties into the intercoastal. This is the, a more detailed view of the pump station and the, uh, the crossing underneath Highway 311. It's another aerial view of the uh, artist uh, conceptual drawings of the, uh, the pump station. This is the discharge pipes that are, uh, will be placed into Little Bayou Black. Again, uh, we're gonna put a, a, a fence around it, decorative, uh, to keep the honest people honest. We're gonna add um, a large fuel tank in addition to the two fuel tanks that are on each uh, power pack. And that's the, uh, the auxiliary fuel tank you see in, in, in this photograph. That's the actual um, pumps themselves and the uh, part of the piping system. And like I said before, the plan documents are roughly 80% complete with design. We have submitted permits to all of the agencies involved and those include Louisiana Department of Natural Resources, uh, OCM, the uh, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and the uh, LADOTD because we're crossing under two of their uh, their highways. Uh, all the permits again have been uh, applied for. All the landowners that are impacted have been notified. Discussions are ongoing with the landowners. We haven't gotten any of the right of ways yet, but those are ongoing. And. Uh, that just about concludes my presentation, unless uh, anyone has any questions. Hold on, Mr. Toops. Uh, Mr. Harding. Uh, yes, I would like to say, but well, this is basically my, uh, my district. I appreciate everyone that was involved with that. 
there have been a number of calls that actually come uh, from within this area. And oddly or nothing, I mean, this is our, our taxpayers' dollars uh, that are at work, um, those complaints, and oddly enough also uh, that we have to change the flow of the water. The, flow, the water was flowing the other way, so with this, we would actually be able to not only handle that particular area and actually take away some of the, the pump uh, pressure that we're going to actually have on the other end. So uh, those people within those areas, so as Leveron, uh, in the Dumas area, uh, Columbus Street, you know, uh, uh, be patient. Uh, we're at work. Thank you. Mr. Michel. Oh, okay. All right, thank you. Uh, and I just will, um, I know that you said you were going to do one project at a time, but since it's on the agenda, I wanted to just ask, is there any update on the on the uh, utilities plant, on the Homa uh, generation plant? No, sir. We uh, we we have hired uh, consultants, and they're um, it, it's in the process. That's all I can. I think, know it sir. takes time, but I, I'm gonna keep asking until until we know something. Uh, we we still work on it, Mr. Thank, Michelle. Thank you very much. And also next the next council meeting. We will be giving a presentation on the um, shell donation property and that drainage system. So that's going to be in two weeks. Thank you, Mr. Toos. Mr. Mr. Babin. Yes, Mike, this, uh, this new pump station, this should also enhance the, the Bayroid pump station because the Bayroid pump station draws from this right now. So the areas around Marker Street and Railroad Avenue and stuff should be better off now that this is going to be a separate system. Because mm -hmm. there's a valve behind, uh, I think, my, uh, Dumas Auditorium, if I'm not mistaken. Definitely. So this will help that system. Because that system was done about six years ago, updated. Okay, thank you. And, and this is a, um, a project that, uh, of course, Councilman Carl Hardy and I have worked closely together with administration uh, because it, it traverses both of our districts. And we've both uh, had calls from, you know, some of the businesses along Tunnel Boulevard. I know uh, the Barker dealerships have had their cars flooded multiple times uh, in that area. And I know it diverts some of the water from Terrebonne to Little Bayou Black, but we also have another project, which hopefully you will also highlight, which is the pump station that will be built at McDonald's to help push water out of Little Bayou Black and the intercoastal because if we're putting more water into Little Bayou Black, naturally we're going to push it out. It's all part of a, 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 of a system. But, uh, Bayou Terrebonne, as we know, can't handle any more water. You know, it has about as much water as it can handle. So it ha we have to split up this water between Bayou Terrebonne and between uh, Bayou Black, you know, and this will do that. I think it's a good project. Um, I'm anxious to see it, you know, get to where we've got the permits and we can start construction on it. But thank you, Mike, for giving us the update. Any more comments or questions? Thank you, Mike. Okay, moving along. Uh, proclamation proclaiming May, tw May 2nd through the 8th, 2022, as Drinking Water Week in Terrebonne Parish. Mr. Steve Trosclair. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. It gives me a great honor to read this proclamation to uh, <coughs> you guys. Uh, you know, Kevin Parish has some of the finest drinking water in the state, and these guys do a really good job. So the proclamation reads, whereas water is our most valuable natural resource, and whereas drinking water serves a vital role in our daily lives, serving as essential purpose to health, hydration, and hygiene needs for the quality of life our citizens enjoy. And whereas tap water delivers public health and protection, fire protection, support for our economy and the quality of life we enjoy. And whereas it is due to the hard work performed by the entire water sector and the pipe crew in designing capital projects, operating and ensuring the safety and quality of drinking water or maintaining the infrastructure, communities rely on to transport high quality drinking water from its source to consumers' taps. And whereas the coronavirus pandemic has shown a light on the importance of drinking water for health, hydration, and hygiene needs. And whereas we are all stewards of the water infrastructure upon which current and future generations depend, and whereas the citizens, citizens of our parish are called upon to help protect our source of water from pollution and get involved by educating and familiarizing themselves with it, 
I therefore be resolved by the Kevin Parish Council on behalf of the Parish President Gordon E. Dove and the entire Kevin Parish Consolidated Government that May 1 through 7, 2022 be hereby proclaimed Drinking Water Week in Terrebonne Parish. This proclamation is hereby presented on the 27th day of April 2022. It's signed by our Parish President Gordon Dove, our Council Chair Darren Guidry, and it's endorsed by the entire Council. So, uh, go ahead and make the presentation. Mr. Voisin, would you like to say anything, or Mr. Sobear? Like to maybe turn the speaking over to our general manager, who is Mr. Michael Sobear, who has done an excellent job. And here, we here. really appreciate that. Mr. Sobear. Thank you, sir. I'd like, if you may, Mr. Council President, to just introduce uh, our board that, that each one of you appoint. I will say up front, Ms. Terry Chatnier for Mr. Amadi and Mr. Ken Ellender for uh, Councilman Michel had prior engagements. They send their regards, but also regrets we couldn't make it. So of course, our president, Mr. Chester Wazan is appointed by Mr. Davin, Danny Davin. Our vice president, Mr. Johnny Pizzolatta is appointed by Ms. Jessica Domain. Our uh, secretary, Clifton Stuple, is appointed by Mr. Dirk Guidry. Uh, our board member, uh, Mr. Stephen Hornsby, is appointed by Mr. Trostclair. Mr. Vincent Celestin, our board member, uh, is appointed by Mr. John Navy. Uh, Mr. Charles Brown is appointed by Council President Darren Guidry. And Mr. Wilbert Thomas is appointed by Mr. Corley Harding. These gentlemen work very hard. They are the ones who set policy and I'm honored to be able to carry out their policy. Thank you all very much for acknowledging the importance of water. Appreciate it, thank you. Mr. Sober. Yes. Hey, Todd, you got a couple of lights. So look, I, you know, the proclamation read, you know, talked about the, uh, the coronavirus pandemic and stuff. But what it didn't, it didn't mention anything about the, uh, the trials and tribulations you guys went through for Hurricane Ida. And you know, I know for a fact that you guys really worked ha hard and did a, a, a fantastic bang up job getting the water restored. You know, it took a long time to get it to the far reaches of the parish, but it wasn't because of no lack of effort no, by the waterworks and the people, whatever. So I want to extend my uh, appreciation for the guys that were out in the trenches. I mean, you guys really did a good job, but those guys in the trenches <coughs> that were out in the mud and the rain and the, and the weather, digging those ditches and pulling those pipelines up and getting them repaired really did a fantastic job. So once again, thank you all and keep up the good work. Thank you, I'll make sure they know that. Thank you all very much. Mr. Navy. Yes, once again, um, do you trust Claire stole my thunder? <laughs> Oh, I love that. Uh, Mike Sober, let me tell you, you're outstanding. And you have an all-star board that we you're do. working with. We're very fortunate. Very professional and experienced guys that knows this parish very well. And Steve is correct. We're talking about COVID. That's, that's my passion there, too, making sure that we keep everybody safe. But the deal, the, the, guy, the, the job that you did with Ida was remarkable. I mean, to get the water restored the way you did, the things that your guys was out there when in the trenches, like Steve was saying, when all the debris was still in the streets, they was out there like soldiers. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm, I'm oh, look, I've been knowing you for years, man. I love you to death. I like the fact that you are professional, the way you dealt with this with parish, 
and this board shows me that you got strong, great leadership, Thank brother. You, Don. Thanks a lot, and God bless you for what you did for Terrebonne Parish, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Michel. Mr. Sober, I can't even begin to say how much I appreciate you, your board, and your staff uh, for so many different reasons. But, you know, we tend to take drinking water for granted because it's always there when we need it. But as the gentleman before me said, uh, eight months ago, that changed at least for a while. And, and so people don't necessarily take it for granted anymore. Uh, and and y'all were right there doing what you need to do. Y'all were there on that huge job to take care of it. But it's not just that. When there's a small problem somewhere at somebody's house, y'all are there in a heartbeat. And again, I've said this once before uh, a, few, a couple of years ago, but again, about a year or so ago, you were out there, not just your staff, you came out uh, and because this older gentleman was having trouble getting his water hooked back up and he had no water in his home. And you came and saw what, what, what needed to be done and helped him to do what needed to be done. And, and you don't have to do that, but you do. And, 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 you know, this is not just a job to you. This is a vocation. And, uh, and, and I see it, and it's clear as day, and I just thank you so much, sir. Absolutely. Thank you. Mr. Dirk Guidry. And what everybody else said uh, is the truth, you know what I mean? And, uh, and I'm going to go back to with the Hurricane Otter deal. Let me tell you what. You don't know how much you appreciate water till you don't have water for 15, 20 days. You know, when you're taking a bath out of bottled water, we love you guys, you know what I mean? And, you know, I, I know you're going to be losing two veteran members on your board. Yes. And I know it's going to be hard to replace Mr. Walter. You know, it, it's hard because these guys have worked so good together. I've been, I've been on the council going on 11 years now, and you guys have done a bang-up job. Uh, Mr. Sobat, whenever I call and you, I got a problem, you jump on it. I mean, it's not something that you wait two or three days. You jump on it right now, you know. And I know they had problems all over the parish, and you guys and – not only these guys, but the people that work for you. That's really the heartbeat of your organization is the people that work for you. And if you take care of them and you treat them like family and you treat them right, they're going to go out there and buzz that butt for you. You know what I mean? So thank you for everything you've done, and thank you for everything your board does, but especially thank all the employees that work for you. Certainly thank you, will. Mr. Sobat. Thank you, Councilman. Mr. Babin. Yeah, I echo that 100%. Those of us that represent down the bias where it took three weeks or so to get water back, you know, not until this time, I thought we could live without water easier than we could live without electricity. <coughs> Guess what? You can't, yeah. okay? You, you need that water, and you guys did a, a phenomenal job. Thank you me. told me years ago, Mike, you said, I don't mind jumping in the ditch and getting the job done, but tomorrow I want to know why I had to jump in the ditch. You don't have to jump in the ditch because you got good I people do. I do. Okay, I do. I'm so thank you very much for the, the district I represent in all of Terrible Parish. Mr. Amity. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and Mr. Mike, like they all say, at a moment's notice, you're right there to help us with whatever we do. But let me speak from a contractor for, for a little while. As a contractor, 30 years now, um, we deal with waterworks and the projects. Just recently, you helped us out on a, on a project. It's because of this board that you have with you and the employees that work for you right. and your great leadership that got us water fast because as we were just talking, areas that have been hit by storms are still fighting trying to get water. People don't realize how quick we've recovered because you guys were proactive and you were out there. I mean, your people were out surveying because I was out there looking at what damage what needed to be attended right. to, and I, I crossed their paths and talked to them about anything that I may have seen water bubbling up. Very kind. But, I mean, <clears throat> I think we have one of the, the best water districts in the state, if not the best, and – it goes all the way down to when you drink the water and you taste it. I work all over the state, and they got some nasty taste in water, mm -hmm. but uh, not in Terrebonne Parish. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's really good. So I commend you all for uh, for all that you've done. So it's uh, it's always a pleasure, sir. Thank you, Mr. Harding. Uh, yes, Mike, man, you've been great uh, for me also, uh, and I'm expressing the same sentiments as everyone else on this board. Uh, 
uh, have already expressed. Uh, but then one thing that really I really feel as if that we didn't do enough when we just give you that proclamation and the piece of paper because you guys have actually des well deserved of much more than the, than the words that we have here. And I appreciate your board and like everyone else said that you know your leadership trickles all the way down to the last man, uh, last man up. So thank you. I would, if I may, just just to mention that are almost a hundred employees in Consolidated Waterworks. Uh, we have everyone from engineers to accountants to chemists to biologists. To, uh, all of us are, are, are all Louisiana Department of Health certified uh, as operators to operate. We collect no taxes. We are strictly a fee for service. You process the water. We send you a bill after what you use it. So we thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> the gentleman that, and lady that I work for is, uh, sets the tone. They don't accept anything except excellence. And then we start there and we let it trickle down. Thank you very much. I'll be and very kind to you. And Mr. Silbert, from the chair, I just want to say I think you see how many fans you have uh, mm -hmm. up here on, on this, uh, this board. And you know, a testament to an organization is how well it is from the top down. We, we have an excellent board behind you. Mm -hmm. They've hired an excellent director. Thank you. Uh, even to your staff inside your office, down to the, the, the people who come and read the meters. I mean, I have not met anybody in your organization I would, I would not um, defend as being the, the most professional uh, you. water people in, in this state, for sure. I'm sure they know that. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Very appreciate Would it. any other board members like to say anything? Mr. Scoofley, and I'd just like to comment that as a board member, I really appreciate that we have Mr. Sobert as our general manager. And you all all say he's doing a good job. I'm going to tell you why he's doing a good job. He tells us every now and then, I'm having fun. And when you can have fun on your job, you can do a good job. Thank you, Mr. Stoufle. <laughs> <laughs> Moving along, proclamation proclaiming May 2022 as Veterans Month in Homa Terrible, and this will be read by our veterans on the, the uh, council here, Mr. Dirk Guidry, followed by Mr. Carl Harding, and then Mr. Danny Babin. Mr. Guidry. It's with great honor that I read this. The only problem I have is that we're honoring veterans only in the month of May. We should honor veterans and their families 12 months a year, 365 days. So let me, you know, with all the turmoil and everything going on in this world, we have to thank our veterans, you know, whether it's male, female, sergeant, enlisted officers, it's what makes the world go around, guys. These guys have laid their lines on the line to protect us. When me, Mr. Babbitt, and Mr. Harding joined the military, we signed a blank check giving the United States government our lives to do what they wanted with us. Thankfully, we all came back. There's a lot, a lot of them that, there's a, a good bit of them that didn't come back. So, you know, like I say, every day should be Veterans Day, you know what I mean? And if you see a veteran, thank a veteran, because without them, we wouldn't all be sitting in this room right now. So with that, I'm gonna read this proclamation. I'll read part of it in Mr. Carter Harding, which is a Navy veteran. Mr. Babin is an Army veteran, and I'm an Air Force veteran, so we got to know they're all covered except the Marine Corps and the Space Force and Coast Guard. So thank you all. Whereas each month we celebrate our veterans and their families, both living and deceased, for their patriotism and contributions to our nation in times of war and peace, and whereas we as citizens are indebted to our veterans and their families for their bravery and sacrifices, which have provided for many of the freedoms we cherish today, especially those veterans suffering, for, suffering from illnesses such as post-traumatic stress disorder, presumptive conditions, or experiencing homelessness in living at shut-ins. Whereas organizations such as American Veterans Advocacy, Vets United worked diligently to assist veterans and their families acting as their uh, caregivers and receiving critical benefits and health care services to bring about awareness to those benefits and services to veterans and their families in need. And whereas it is our obligation to ensure that those who have served and 
to those who are serving their country and their families are recognized for their selfish, selflessness and their dedication to the preservation of the health and well-being of others. Now, therefore, it be resolved by the Terrebonne Parish Council on behalf of the Parish President Gordon E. Dove and the entire Terrebonne Parish Consolidated Government that the month of May 2022 be hereby proclaimed as Veterans Month in Terrebonne Parish. Be it further resolved that all residents be encouraged to participate in the various events throughout the month of May to honor our veterans and their families and to recognize them for their heroism, accomplishments in serving their country and the common good. Presented this 27th day of May, uh, excuse me, of April 2022, signed by Gordon E. Dove, Parish President, Darren Guidry, Council Chair, and endorsed by the entire Parish Council. Mr. Smith, would you like to come up and... Yes, if you're a veteran, please come up and be in the photograph. Would you like to say a few words? You next, so I'll pass it up. <laughs> <He's on my line. laughs> Go ahead. I truly want to thank y'all. Uh, I had to have support. Uh, they've been with me over five years. We've worked hard at this project here in Homer, at the Homer Parish Library. Uh, the way we're going to do this month, we're going to go visit all of our shut-in veterans at the nursing homes. Uh, so far, we have five nursing homes. Uh, Lafourche Parish, we're going to do that on the 9th. Broadway, which is in Lockport, we're going to do that on the 12th. Uh, the Claiborne House, we'll do that on the 16th. Heritage Manor, we're going to do that on the 19th. And the 21st, we'll have another meeting uh, at the library. That's the week before. And then we'll have uh, our annual day on the 28th at the uh, Memorial Park, Veterans Memorial Park. And the museum's going to have an open house on the 30th. That's right, that's the 30th. Huh? And what we plan to do is give little mementos to our shut-in veterans at these nursing homes uh, to let them know we haven't forgotten about them. There's a long time coming that we also include the family with that because every veteran has a family and they don't know exactly what to do to get help for that veteran when he's in these crisis moments. PTSD is one of the biggest things that we deal with now. But there's also another thing of lost feelings of camar camaraderie. Uh, 
all veterans know what camaraderie is. But when the family gets with the veteran, that is his camaraderie. That's why we included the entire family of all veterans to be honored also. Because they are the caregivers of the ones that don't get the care from the VA. So when we did this program, we changed the narrative of who we are. Super senior veterans are 90, 92, but they're World War II veterans. We had that many there. We started March 19th. We just had senior veterans, which we are, Vietnam and Korean veterans. And we're gonna have junior veterans. That is the entire month of May. It's for all veterans to come together at the park and bring your family and if we give you a cup of coffee or a donut, that's all we can afford. But if you wanna bring anything, the park is open and uh, what's that thing? South Down. South Down has given us that entire side on the other side of the park where we can use that area along there. Anybody wanna bring their tents or something and set up there? We're allowed to do that. Other than that, I have no more to say, and I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Lambart, one of our oldest. Uh, we have another one that's 98. He couldn't make it because he's being honored at World War II Museum today for um, Normandy. Is that right? Normandy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, his name is Mr. Norris Movart. Go, come on, uh, come yeah. on to the mic if you don't mind. Yeah, come on. So on. everybody can hear you. Because I'm talking to nothing. Very well. You were dancing together. Uh, he was uh, General Eisenhower Korea. And he always tells this story. He had to bring some papers, uh, I guess, past the, the line. And uh, he was stopped by the uh, MPs and said, Yeah, you can't go past uh, the military line. He said, well, I can go any way I want. He said, oh, no, no, no. And, and, he, and he pulls out this paper signed by General Eisenhower. The MP said, you could go anywhere in the world. <laughs> so that's how well I know Mr. Norris. Uh, my name is Ronald Lambert. I know some of y'all know me. Daniel, Curry, Adoy, Jessica. Uh, I was in the military for a couple years. And when I got out uh, in May of, two, I got out in 63 in May, 2007, I was diagnosed with leukemia. Uh, from leukemia, I went to prostate. From prostate, I went to adrenal. From adrenal, I went to kidney. From, ki uh, from kidney, I went to fascia. And all because Fort Ord had Agent Orange on, on the property. Uh, the EP EPA uh, said there was uh, the water was contaminated and also the soil. I, in 2019, I applied with the VA and uh, still fighting with them. And uh, they sent me a nice little notice. Let's see if I can find it. I do have a big file on them. Uh, adrenal cancer, deny. Leukemia, deny. Uh, uh, also had a heart attack. Taken for taking chemo, they had to put a stent in. Deny. Gallbladder, deny. Cancer, uh, kidney cancer, deny. Prostate, deny. Squinty cell carcinoma, which was my face, deny. And you know, when you're in the military, you know who's your enemy. But guess what? When you get out, you know who's your enemy. The veteran affair. And if you don't believe me, Put these words in the computer. Delay, deny, hope to die. Who pops up? Veteran affair. Isn't that sad? That is sad. You know, that is very sad. My mother sent four of us to the military. Two brothers in World War II, one in Korea. He came back with tuberculosis, spent two years at Fitzsimmons Hospital in Denver, Colorado. And I went to Vietnam. No, I didn't go to Vietnam. I stopped by California. And they said, hey, you got a degree in accounting. You don't have to go to Vietnam. We need a payroll clerk. Yes, sir, 18 months. But you know, they're sad. But, and we got something the other day. 
some more BS from the Veteran Affairs. It's always BS. It's like I said, delay, delay, deny, hope you die. But anyway, thank you, Johnny, for helping us. If it wasn't for me, for Johnny, I wouldn't even know I had to apply for any kind of benefit. It's such a secret. I didn't know until uh, I was 80 years old. 80 years old, I'd have to get some benefit. Thank you. We do have a couple of lights, Mr. Navy. Yeah, I, I just want to uh, just to take the opportunity to uh, thank everyone here, all the veterans, so that for uh, definitely are we looking at uh, as far as liberty, as far as liberty, and the thing that you're talking about. I mean, you served our country very well, and uh, the 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 notion of that we have people, especially fight for our country, and come back, and they still have to fight for things that that's been done to them that's not right, and we don't get the benefits that you need to get, I think that's really a catastrophe for our country to even be on that notion. But the fact that you all serve for us, liberty and justice, that's the thing that I'm so proud of that you all serve for us for. And I had the opportunity to be on this council when I first got here, my first uh, term, and I've been here 11 years, like Mr. Billy Guidry and Danny Babin was here. I actually served with these two veterans that shared a lot of stories about that. and. A lot of things I didn't know, and I, I, I look, it was a pleasure to, to be had an opportunity to serve with men that served this country well. And even today, uh, being in the, the, you know, the president of you all, I'm touched because myself, I was brought up after my father was tragically uh, died in, in a work related accident. I was three years old, my little brother was three months old. My, uncle raised me, William Simmons Sr., his son's here today for accommodations for the technical career school. Um, he was a Marine veteran, he, a Marine veteran, and he raised me with a stern hand as a, as, a, as a veteran. My brother went to the first Iraq war. He's a veteran. I had four uncles in the military. A couple of them went to war, Vietnam. So I understand exactly what you're talking about, sir, and what the rest of you all are going through. Our country fought for liberty. These people fought for liberty. And the way they're being treated today is unfair. I know I hear a lot of horror stories. The gentleman talked about PTSD, which is a mental health diagnosis. Mental health is a major issue. It's definitely with our veterans that need to be dealt with, too. There's a lot of things going on that you're talking about. I agree with you. But the, the, the notion that, that we're not being, you all are not being treated fairly, I understand that something needs to be done about that. But Today, I thank all of you all for serving this country and serving this country well. Again, thank you and God bless you. Thank you, sir. Ms. Domain. Yeah, thank you. And Mr. Johnny, look what you did. Um, you know, it was just a couple months ago you came up to me at Roof for a Reason and you said, I'm so glad we met. I was able, you know, to, to get you here. Um, and then look where we are now. And I, I feel like this is going to be something really great for veterans and really great for the the parish and so I'm very happy um, that we met and that we were able to bring you here and um, and get you to do this um, I come from a big family of veterans um, my grandfather was in World War II um, my father-in-law is a veteran both brother-in-laws are veterans and so there's lots of veterans in my family yeah, and so <laughs> yeah yeah so um, I can absolutely appreciate everything that you guys um, do and have done and um, Mr. Lambert you just uh, um, uh, a great so. asset to our community and so I'm so glad that you guys are here and so um, you know thank you so much again for everything that you guys have done Mr. Babbin <coughs> Mr. Smith yes, it's sir. a pleasure sir okay thank you, you it, this is long overdue all right and and you know as Dirk said earlier you know everybody that served you know we, we throw it around the word hero a lot okay but you know just to serve is it, it, to me, it's my heart. My hero was my father-in-law, who died two years ago, Ray Marcel. He came out of a prison or war camp, weighing 83 pounds, 83 pounds, and lived to a glorious 97 years old. So he was my hero, but everybody that serves has done so much for this country. And, and we need to get away from where we are today and get back to believing in what we should be believing in. Yeah. But again, I thank you very much, and uh, you and I will be talking some more. So Absolutely. thank you very much, and Mr. Lambert, of course, you as well. Yeah, you'd be thank you all.
and thank you and uh, Mr. Lambert it looks like you know you fought for us and you're continuing to fight and fight and we have a lot of battles and you know um, we're with all of you so I appreciate it I hope everyone can turn out for the museum it's open house yeah. on the 30th everybody free <laughs> one more oh wait one more thing Miss Domingue Mr. Lambert um, did give me an application for all of us to join as uh, members of the museum, and I have given that to, um, to Mr. Keith, and so he'll be giving it to you guys um, so that you can join, and I will be um, sending and you my check. You notice my little note that said we are looking for some good Marines. I'll scratch it out and I'll put number. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. So I put every, that in everybody's uh, box. Thanks. Thank you. Moon Alone, commendation, uh, recognizing the Lewis Miller Terrebon Career and Technical High School 2021-2022 Skills USA State Competition Participants, Mr. Steve Trosclair. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Give a great pleasure to acknowledge these young men and women that attend uh, Terrebon Parish Public School Systems at the Lewis Miller uh, Terrebon Botech School. Uh, they recently went to uh, to North Louisiana to a state competition. Uh, there were 19 students that went and uh, the majority of them came back with some type of medal accommodations and stuff. So what I'd like to do, I'd like to acknowledge these, these students. You know, uh, a lot of people, you know, people in general push college educations. Um, college education is great. But we are in desperate need, especially in, in South Louisiana, but throughout the country, we're in desperate need of more hands-on blue-collar workers uh, with, with some type of skills and experience. Uh, we, we have, you know, that's why I came up. I came up, you know, working on tools and mechanic work. And uh, they, they're hard to find these guys now, you know, these people. Uh, it, it, but this is, a, this is a need that we desperately have, and I would like to see a lot more students taking advantage of this program that we offer at Votet. Um, you know, these guys, ladies and, 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 and gentlemen, they, uh, they've got some really talented people from what I can see here coming out of Terrebonne Parish, and, and you know, I, I just wish that you guys would do some recruiting and, and get more people into, into this Voltech school so that when I go out to hire people, I don't have to try to call, call Alabama, Mississippi, Texas, and everybody else looking for people to come to work for me, uh, which is what I'm having to do now. So it's, uh, it gave me great pleasure to do this. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna uh, call out the instructors. And if you're here, if you don't mind, stand up and come walk to the, towards the podium. Once I get all the instructors called out, I'm gonna go down the list and call out, you know, to the students that participated and what they participated in. And if you guys would stand up when I call your name and walk up to the front. And then we got certificates for everybody. We'll give them, we'll uh, let the instructors give them out. So we're gonna start off with uh, instructor Tammy Arsenault. She was job skills demonstration. Tammy, if you're here, if you, you can step up. Uh, Kevin Crochet, welding instructor. Mika Johnson, Neil Care Cosmetology and Aesthetics. Ethan Kelly, Diesel Equipment Technology. Carlin Landry, Collision Repair Technology. Chad LaFleur, Electrical Construction, Wiring and HVAC. And uh, Doug Walling, uh, Automotive Service Technology. These are instructors and, and Guys, I really appreciate everything you do to, to instruct our, our you know, young people from the parish. They really appear to be doing really good. Now we're gonna go down. Uh, the first student, Ali Acosta, she, uh, she played, played uh, bronze medal at the job skills demonstration. Brian Arroyo, Arroyo, if I got that right, he's a welding. Elizabeth Bro, nail care. She won gold medal and is going to Atlanta to the Nationals. Jasmine Brune, cosmetology. She won a silver medal, going to Atlanta for to the Nationals. Carly Champagne, nail care, silver medal, going to Atlanta for the Nationals. Jasmine Williams, aesthetics, 
gold medal going to Atlanta for the nationals. Esperanza Delgado, cosmetology, gold medal going to Atlanta. In the diesel equipment technology, Blake Knockin, bronze medal. Blaze <laughs> Brune, they all deserve a round of applause. We're going to do that when we get done. <laughs> Blaze Brune, diesel equipment technology, gold medal going to Atlanta. Trinity Dupree, diesel equipment technology. Austin Carrer, diesel equipment technology, won a silver medal. In the collision repair technology, we got uh, Kenyaki. Is that right? Kaniki Jackson Jr. Kai Maloso. Jesse Wayne, silver medal going to Atlanta in the automotive refinishing technology. We definitely need a lot of car painters and car repair guys in Terrell Parish. <laughs> um, in the electric construction, Max Davis, Jason Lee, bronze medal, uh, electrical construction wiring. Matthew Mouton, electrical construction wiring, gold medal, going to Atlanta, and was also elected to, as a state officer. Uh, Austin Burgess, automotive service technology, and Jacob Pellegrin, automotive service technology, gold medal, going to Atlanta, and he also got elected as a state officer. And uh, Jacob actually works in our, in our shop as a part-time employee. So, uh, once again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I really appreciate you guys putting the effort it took to do this. I mean, it, it, it's obvious from the amount of medals that we won that Terrell Parish had a really good showing at this at this uh, competition. And keep up the good work. So. Mr. Simmons? Where's Mr. Simmons? The principal of the high school. First of all, um, my name is Mika Johnson, and I've been at uh, Lewis Miller Career and Technical High. Or Would you hold up for one second? Now, I apologize. I didn't realize that uh, Mr. Simmons, the principal of the school, was here tonight. So I want to acknowledge Mr. Simmons also. So thank you, Mr. Simmons. Okay, I'm sorry. For oh, no, that's okay. Again, um, I'm Mika Johnson. Uh, I've been at Lewis Miller Career and Technical High School for 21 years, and this is our leader. And our other faculty members can vouch for this. Like you've all said, no, no ship can run without a great leader. So our leader makes sure that we're a part of several different things, and it's all to make our students shine and do well to be able to be employable in our parish. Thank you. Now, on behalf of the Lewis Miller Turbo and Career Technical High School, we'd like to thank the uh, council for inviting us and giving us accommodation. But Ms. Mika Johnson is too generous. She's going to get a pass on the observation, so <laughs> that's why she said that. <laughs> but guys, I, I, want, I want you to know that Ms. Johnson has also been elected to as president of the state Skills USA Board of Skills USA. So that just happened, so we're happy to have a president local uh, here and on the campus of Lewis Mill Turbine Career Technical High School. <laughs> And I want to say just a couple more things. Ms. Johnson, congratulations. And also, you know, um, in the world of media and press today, you know, negativity sells. We very sell, that's why I like to get these positive attitudes, you know, and acknowledge them publicly because they don't get a lot of acknowledgement. You know, you, when you pick up the newspaper or read social media or you look at the news, you see, you know, all the bad things and things going wrong with the country. 
you never see kid, you know, students like this that excel, that, that really apply themselves and really do well. You very rarely see that. So I take great pleasure in getting those guys, get you guys here. And I look forward to getting you guys here next year again and the year after. As long as I'm on the council, I'll definitely keep getting you guys here. So just uh, keep up the good work. And once again, congratulations to all of you. Thank you, Mr. Trustee. And listen, before, before I sit down, I also want to recognize uh, Mr. Ethan Kelly. Uh, so Mr. Ethan Kelly is 22 years old. He's a newly uh, uh, hired diesel mechanic teacher who was one of my students who attended Lewis Miller Terminal Career Technical High School. In addition, was a state board officer and a gold medal winner and participated in Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky. So we were able to bring a 22-year-old student back to our campus and also become the instructor of the diesel program. So, wow. Thank you all again. We do have a couple of lights. Uh, Ms. Domain? Yes. Um, and congratulations, everybody. This is amazing. Um, I actually didn't even know this program existed in Terrible Empower, so I'm so glad that you guys are, are here today. Um, and if the past eight months have taught us anything, we need skilled laborers, and we need people to have the skills that you guys are learning, um, and we need uh, those in numbers. And so how does someone go about applying to your school, or how does somebody get more information um, about where to go? And when they finish, do they receive like a high school diploma? I mean, so can you explain a little bit more about that? Yeah, uh, so the State Department of Education, uh, we develop uh, something that's called a jump start. Uh, and a jump start, we want kids, to, uh, students to earn credentials before graduation so that they can go outside of the school into the workforce with credentials. And, and I'll give you an example. I, I have several students here tonight that receive multiple ASE tests. And guys, would you stand? So, so these guys are going to graduate from high school with ASC tests already passed, okay? Um, in addition to that, we have some students with electrical training, ETA. Uh, do I have electrical students with the ETA training? So when they walk out the door, they're going to be uh, ready to go into an apprenticeship program with the Electrical Training Alliance. Um, in addition to that, these electrical guys are earning um, knowledge in theory, DC theory, blueprint reading, uh, job studies and in, in occupation for electricity, uh, the, the Ohm's law, kerchief law. So these are some things that they, they, as a professional electrician, you need to know. So these students are actually walking out of our school with that training. Now with that said and done, um, I have some other kids who also, they, they all have credentials. So, and we make sure that everybody's gonna have a credential because we track it. In addition to that, in order to graduate in the Jumpstart program, you have to have a credential to graduate. So we actually make sure that they, they will have a credential which, when, when they graduate. Now, um, how do you get in the program? You have to declare that you're a Jumpstart student, or you could take Jumpstart classes as electives. Um, so as a regular Topps University kid, uh, you would need like four Englishes, four maths, four science, four social studies, um, and two uh, electives in, in uh, foreign language, when Jumpstart, we concentrate more on the skilled area. So what they would need uh, four Englishes, four maths, and two science and two social studies, and nine electives in a career selected area. Okay, so that's how we determine uh, our Jumpstart kids. And listen, let me tell you, we figured it out. We've been telling kids wrong. We've been preparing 99% of our students to go to college. And when they go to college, only one fourth of those students are actually coming back with a college degree, the three-fourths are coming back with debt. No hand skills training into a minimum wage job, making less money, can't afford, and, and what, what happens is then they fall back onto the government for help. So we figured it out. Let's give all of our students hand skill training so that we prepare them to go out into society and become a competitor in global market uh, workforce. What I'm traveling with today is our future and our local community leaders. That's what I'm traveling with today. Mr. Harding. Ah, uh, yes. 
Uh, great to see you. And, and uh, some, you, some wonderful news that, that, that we're getting here. Uh, there's a contractor I know that's out there. You know I mean? He's looking at uh, some of the people that are out there. And we've been working uh, outside, uh, even with different areas uh, from 15 to 25-year-old people, because right now we are recovering, and Turbone Parish is going to need you. Yes, uh, and Turbone Parish is looking for you. And, and, and most importantly, uh, they're, they, they're, they can come out of here and actually really be above minimum wage. Yes, sir. And, um, and another thing I want to bring out uh, about this, the school is named after Mr. Lewis Miller. Mr. Lewis Miller. Yes, and sir. I tell you what, you know what I mean? He's proud. He's looking down on this school. His name, he was my neighbor uh, in the neighborhood. He was a mentor toward me. And some of the things that he, uh, he has with this technical school that – he actually showed me, and I just little kid following him around, you know, because he had his girls, you know. Yes, sir. And um, so it, it's, it's a, uh, not only a tribute to uh, what you have done um, at that technical uh, school, but then actually this school is living up to the name of Mr. Lewis Miller. And yes, I sir. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you so much for that. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Navy. Yes, and, and I answered some of the questions that Jessica was just asking. Jessica, that's, I'm a school counselor, so we actually – direct those kids in the pathway that he's going to, Top University Jump Start. And it's amazing that we finally got it. That she's correct, Mr. Simmons. Uh, the Department of Education finally got that, to diversify our education system for the workforce. And you are absolutely correct. Years ago, we was gearing our kids only for to go to college. No options. You had the career school back then, but Votech would have was called. But it wasn't directing them to give that, that skill training that they need. Yes, sir. Now they're directing them that way. So we actually take those kids, those 11th and 12th graders at the time, like you're just talking about, to give them the skills that they need with the credentialing. And I can tell you, it's been amazing with the, with the skills, with, you know, what you sent them to, definitely in Kentucky. And it, it's changing. It's really changing the game because now the kids go to, they take a, what a test called the word keys. And if they score a silver or gold on the word keys, and that's part of the Jumpstart pathway, they actually could get three, four, five hours extra an hour in wow. some of the businesses. Correct. Uh, actually, my, my daughter took that test, and she's in Baton Rouge. She's working for a plant, and she's making about twenty-some dollars an hour coming out of high school. Yes, sir. Okay, because she took the work keys and she was in the program. So it's it's very successful. Finally, we know how to diversify our system yes, sir. for the workforce and education. Because I'm not taking anything away from Top University, but now we got Top University with kids that really want to go to college. And now we got the Oscar with kids that want to go into workforce. Mm -hmm. Both could be successful, so we finally got it right. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Nader. Thank you. Mr. Trostclair. Yeah, just a little quick note. I'm, I'm, I'm going to brag a little bit now. My son-in-law is Chad LaFleur. He's the, he's the instructor at the, uh, in the HVAC electrical uh, the programs. And two out of his three, actually, uh, students that he taught, teaches, won medal, one won gold, and one was elected uh, the uh, state officer. So I want to extend my, con my congratulations to my son-in-law, Chad. Yes, sir. Aww. And Mr. LaFleur has, like you said, two kids who actually placed in, in the state. And we have a local company who wants both of them. They want to hire both of those students. We got one problem, though. His first place is a 10th grader. Yeah, he told me. <laughs> and his third place is a senior. So the senior is going to have the, the div at the new job. But the, the local company said, we're going to wait for that 10th grader to become a senior. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so. And we have a national signing day, just like the regular high schools do, athletic signings and stuff like that. So on May 5th, we have five students who are actually signing with a local company right out of high school. So, so that's going to be on May 5th. That's going to be held in Lewis Miller Turbine Career Technical High School. Uh, we have a couple so, more I, so our school is 3071 Patriot Drive, so it's right past Ellender High School, through the gates. You go through the gates, and you're in. And I tell the kids like this, is it's like a dream come true. It's like Disney World. You know, this is a place that can make your dreams come true. All you have to do is pay attention and learn the skill. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mr. Amity. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And Mr. Simmons, as a contractor, um, I can say that we've gotten some of our best people from what was the trade school and now is the, uh, the center. <clears throat> and me personally being HVAC and licensed plumber, gas fitter, medical gas systems, I tell the young people all the time, college is not necessarily for everybody. Right. Don't, don't go into something because you feel like you have to do what your friends are doing. If you're not 
ready for it, there are other options. And what we've noticed in the market is that the old tradesmen are passing away. Right. And it's created a lot of opportunities for people with these skills to enter the market at good pay. Yes, sir. Um, and, and we've seen it. And in 2001, I hired a young man from the school uh, as HVAC. Mm -hmm. uh, he studied HVAC and electrical. And uh, he's about to take over the HVAC department in our company. Um, what, 20, 21 years? Um, but he's been a top guy since he was 21 years old. So as an encouragement to all you guys, there's a lot of jack that can be made with your skills. And, uh, you know, we, we just have to think smart, think different. And I'm really pleased to see that the education system is starting to realize that because uh, there's a lot of young, young people out there that are going to do well. And the boat don't run if these guys aren't fixing it. That's right. So I thank you and your staff for all that you're doing. Yeah, and, I, and I appreciate you guys allowing our students to hear this and able to participate in this because, like I said, they don't usually get acknowledged or recognized for too many things. But, however, this is the future leaders of our community, and they, they needed to see this and hear that too. Thank you for that. And, and Mr. Simmons, you know, there's, uh, there is an education gap but it's not so much for the kids, it's for the parents. Yes, it is. And I think the South Central Industrial Association had a good program that they did for several years, which explains, which is targeted to the parents to explain to them that the trade is a good job and people can make a lot of money in a trade, mm -hmm. that you don't have to go to college. But I know the parents push their kids to college and you know, put a lot of pressure on kids that they feel like they'll let their parents down if they don't go to college. But I can tell you, you know, Mr. Pizlotta's right there. You know, new plumbers coming in uh, can make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You know, I know I pay some of them. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they make more than some attorneys make. That's right. And, um, you know, so there are some very, very mechanics. You know, again, we get, we get bills when we... Uh, you know, when I have to fix my excavator, I get the bill. You know, when That's I have right. to fix my automobile, I get the bill. And um, y y you could just, there's so many trades that we really desperately need. Mm -hmm. And we need to, to let the parents know that it's okay not to go to college. Not, in fact, it's not, it's not just not okay. It's not just okay, but it's also uh, an area to where they're guaranteed to get a job. That's right. Like you mentioned. You know, that 10th grader there may have a summer job. Uh, Mr. Toos. Yeah, I'd like to take this opportunity to do a little recruiting on behalf of the parish. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, young men and young ladies back there, we have 80 job openings in the parish. Um, if you want to write this down, go to our website, www.tpcg.org and look under job vacancies, but we have right now 80 job vacancies and we would love to hire some of you guys. Thank you very much. Yeah, so, so our ages are uh, 15 to uh, 18 years old right now, 15 to 18. Yeah. And I can tell you, you have a council here committed to making sure our employees get paid what they need to get paid. So, you know, uh, there's a there's a future for you here at, at uh, Terra in Terrebonne Parish. Yes, sir. Uh, definitely. Yes, sir. Uh, any other comments? Chris has one. Uh, okay, Chris, would like to say something? Yeah, I was just going to say if the ages are around 18, 30 years retirement, you can be fully retired by the time you're 50. That's a pretty good deal. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. No doubt. Thank you very much. Hey, Mrs. thank you guys. We have a motion by uh, Mr. Carl Harding to deviate from the agenda and take up the 6.30 public hearings. Do we have a second? Seconded by Mr. Steve Trosclair. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Oh, yeah. If y'all don't want to stay for the uh, rest of the business meeting, you're welcome to leave right now. We can take a little break. If y'all want to get home to have dinner with your families, we fully understand and you won't be interrupting us.
wants a raise, man. If everybody uh, will take their seats, we'll continue on with the 6.30 public hearings. Okay, if everybody will sit down, we'll continue on with the meeting. Let's go on with 630 public hearing, item A, an ordinance to amend the 2022 adopted operating budget, budgeted positions of five-year capital outlay budget of the Terrebonne Parish Consolidated Government for the following items and to provide for related matters. Homo Police Department, U.S. Department of Justice, 500,000. La Petite Facility Improvements, 10,000. Levy District, 800,000. 118 Drainage Project, 232,800. East Side a police substation, $75,925. Code violation compliance, $8,400. Add a full-time administrative coordinator two. Mm -hmm. Delete a full-time administrative tech one and consider adoption. Public once, public twice, third time public. Close. Motion to close, Second. Mr. Dirk Guidry, seconded by Mr. Jessica Domang. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion to adopt, Mr. Dirk Guidry. Second. Seconded, Ms. Jessica Domang. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Aye. Ordinance is approved. Item B, an ordinance to create a no parking zone along the south side of Main Street, LA Highway 24, from the intersection of Adu Street to Wolf Parkway and to provide for installation of said signs. Public once, public twice, third time public. Motion to close, Mr. Carl Harding, seconded by Mr. Steve Trosclair. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion to adopt, Mr. Carl Harding. Second, and Mr. Steve Trosclair. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Ordinance is adopted. Item C, an ordinance to authorize the lease of property at 8033 Main Street, corner of Main and Gabas Streets, Home of Louisiana 70360, parcel number 18796, from property owners, authorize the parish president to execute any and all documents necessary to lease this property and to provide for other related matters there too. Public wants. Public twice, third time public. Motion closed. Motion closed, Ms. Jessica Domain. Seconded, Mr. Carl Harding. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion adopt. Motion adopt, Ms. Jessica Domain. Seconded, Mr. Carl Harding. Discussion, Mr. Michel. Yeah, um, we, here we go again. We, we're gonna lease another parking lot. I, I, don't, I don't see the reason the parish needs to do that. Uh, I've been given some explanations that didn't seem to uh, correlate at all to why we're renting this um, and I, I just don't think we need to be doing that at this time um, I, you know what I'm told that well I passed by and I've seen that, that there's cracks in this parking lot now is that gonna add to our um, liability exposure uh, I just I don't think we need this I think this is uh, this is ridiculous there's there's hidden agenda uh, smell coming out of it all over the place thank you any more discussion? We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? We'll show one name, Mr. Uh, Jerome Michel. 
Item D, an ordinance to establish and define the Terrebonne Parish visible precinct boundaries. Public once, public twice, third time public. Motion to close, Mr. Dirk Guidry, second Mr. John Amity. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion to adopt. Motion to adopt, Mr. Dirk Guidry, second Mr. John Amity. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Ordinance is adopted. Item E, an ordinance to establish and define the Terrebonne Parish Council District boundaries. Public once. Public twice, third time public. Motion, Motion to close, Mr. Dirk Guidry, second to Mr. John Amity. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion to, adopt. Motion to adopt, Mr. Danny Babin, seconded by Mr. John Amity. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Ordinance is adopted. Motion to, Motion to go back in regular order, Mr. Dirk Guidry, seconded by Mr. Carl Harding. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? We're on E, resolution authorizing parish president to execute a master services agreement with Desire Line LLC to assist the planning and zoning department staff with permit application review and processing, elevation certificates, master thoroughfare plan update, and other related departmental planning responsibilities and functions. The MSA will be subject to legal department approval and budget amendment approval as required. Public uh, move by <laughs> Mr. Steve Strasclair. Seconded by Mr. John Amity. Any discussion? Mr. Babin. Actually, I, Mr. Josh, it, it got away from me when we did it. Mr. Josh Manning is here from South Central Planning, who did a great job in South Central Planning, did a great job on the the uh, the boundaries, uh, uh, the new district. I'm sorry, I was drawing a blank on it. So I, I just wanted to acknowledge Josh because he has been here tonight. I apologize for not doing it in the proper order. Thank you, Josh. If you want to say something later, I'll recognize you, Josh. Um, Mr. Michaud. Okay, uh, thank you. I'm just wondering, uh, why isn't this, um, this master services agreement done and included in the backup right now? Um, Mr. It should be in the backup. It was a draft version of it, but I submitted it when I uploaded the agenda okay. item. Okay, and and, uh, and so, but why, why does it say it's subject to so, legal department approval if it's already been? Well, it's still I'm a draft trying. version. Excuse There's me. some technicalities that need to be ironed out. Um, so that would cover, I think that the, the general idea here is that the master services agreement puts the contract in place that we would be able to uh, request certain services from Desire Line LLC through the issuance of task orders. Um, and each task order um, is capped at $50,000, and we can do no more than $150,000 worth of task orders in a given year. Um, okay. And then the subject to budget amendment approval is because right now, within my department's budget, we have 50,000, so we could issue, say, one task order for the 50,000, or maybe it's one for 20, or whatever it is, right? But the other remaining hundred thousand dollars that would be allowed for in that first year would require us to do a budget amendment before we'd be able to execute that. And, and did I read something saying we're going to have a budget amendment in two weeks? Yes, sir. Uh, Candace is working on that budget amendment. Do we know how much so the money is there. It's it just it needs to be moved from one department into the other. And is that for the initial payment or for subsequent payments? For the subsequent payments. Okay. So we right. have I the 50000 in okay. my department now, okay. but the 100000 that would be, uh, I know we're going to need it once yeah, yeah, at yeah, some no, point. That, so that, that's good. I as Mr. Sure. Mike said, we have 80 positions open. I, I've been trying to get a staff planner <laughs> since before COVID. So this will help us a lot. Okay, thank you. Any more discussion? We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Resolution is passed. Public wishing to address the council in accordance with section 2-07E of the Terrebonne Parish Home Rule Charter. The public, uh, public will be held, um, uh, the public comment will be held and can speak for three minutes on any matter related to parish government without discussion or questions and answers on non-agenda items. I have two cards, Mr. Darrell Triggs. Y'all each want to speak? 
Yes, I'm going to, yeah, he's with me. That's my okay. brother. And so, uh, Ms. Darlene Triggs, do you want to, Darlene Williams, Williams do you want to speak first? Yes. Okay, followed by Mr. Triggs. Okay, y'all each have three minutes. Okay, well, I'm here, to, I'm Darlene Williams. My address is 312 Linda Ann Avenue in Gray, Louisiana. I've been there before. You know I mean? Okay, I'm here because on behalf of FEMA and housing. Uh, y'all, everybody know that uh, the Hurricane Ida came ever since August 29, 2021. And we've been trying to get help from FEMA ever since then for um, his mobile home, he's my brother, that was demolished and off the uh, foundation from Hurricane Ida. And we have been denied like three to four times saying that the mobile home is uh, safe to occupy and it's not safe to occupy. And the first time we had, uh, first time they sent out an inspector that didn't even assess the mobile. I know she couldn't go inside because of COVID, but she did not even go near the mobile home. So they say they were safe to occupy after that. And the next couple, well, after that we applied again, they denied us again. So I got an attorney to uh, help us with it. And the attorney tried a couple of times and it did a Excuse a me, Ms. Williams. Th this well, is staff related matters. Well, and well, if attorney is involved, uh, I don't think this would fall within our public Point of order, this is not an agenda item under opens meetings law. If we're gonna discuss an item, it's gotta be put on the agenda. It needs to be voted on by the entire council if y'all gonna allow this to be discussed. This is not properly noticed neither for staff nor for the council. Yeah, well, housing. Really, it's, what about housing? Th this I is a, to this is a housing. next agenda or yeah, I'll do an It's a staff tonight. related matter, so it would have to be put on the agenda so that way staff and administration can be present. Um, Even if I'm trying to find out what kind of housing and assistance they that have is not something to help that, replace it. Yeah, that's not something the council provides. Okay, it's so what do I need to do duty. to be able to bring this forward to the council? What to, I need to do? Uh, either speak to your, your council representative. You can call staff and they can help you out. Okay, that is uh, call is my council representative. Okay. Okay, so I need to speak to Mr. Carr, which I did already. And, um, but... Uh, unfortunately, it's just not a, an item that would fall under. Um, Even if I'm trying to find out what kind of um, assistance they have in the planning department or the. Um, Mr. A. Bear, our legal I, counsel? I, I, the, the council needs not our responder. Yes, ma'am. You need to contact our planning department, either Mr. Chris Pulaski or our department, department of Housing and Human Services, Ms. Kelly Cunningham. If you need assistance, you can, uh, Mike, can they call you, Julie, and get the numbers? Can I give it? Call, you want to give them your number, Mike? 985-873-6407. Now, whose number is this? This is Tax Manager, Mr. Toots. Oh, Mr. Toots, okay. So anytime, could I call you, Mr. Toots? Does it matter? From 7.30 to 4.30, Monday through Friday. Okay, I will call you. Okay. And uh, does I get anything to call Mr. Pulaski? Do I call him for anything, too? Because I know he's over planning. Um, Chris? I'll call you tomorrow. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you all so much. All right. All right. Moving along. Three committee reports. Public Service Committee. Mr. Amadi. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I make a motion that the council accept and ratify the minutes of the Public Services Committee held on April 25th, 2022. And I have one public hearing to introduce an ordinance to establish and define the Terrebonne Parish visible precincts boundaries and to call a public hearing on Wednesday, May 11, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. Second. Motion, Mr. Amadi, is seconded by Mr. Dirk Guidry. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Next item, Budget and Finance Committee, Mr. <coughs> Carl Harding. I make a motion that the council accept and ratify the minutes of the Budget and Finance Committee uh, held on April 25th of 2022. With the correction that for the agenda item number five of Turbone, a home of Turbone Civic Center to be corrected to read uh, as for the Barry P. Bombalane uh, Civic Center. And I have 
one public hearing, uh, introducing an ordinance to amend the 2022 uh, adopt the operation operating budget, budget position, and five-year capital outlay budget in the Turbo and Parish Consolidated Government with the following items and to provide for related matters. Juvenile Attention uh, Center, LCLE, grant $15,000. Homer Police Department, LCLE, grant $60,454. Bayou Blue Sidewalk, $15,000. General Fund, TETA, $150,000. Jail Plumbing Project, $62,000. Animal Shelter Donation, $30,000. Risk Management, negative 31958. Uh, add full-time insurance, uh, technician, delete full admin tech one, delete full time at admin tech two, and call for a public hearing on a said matter on Wednesday, uh, May 11, 2022, at 6 30 p.m. We have a motion by Mr. Carl Harding, seconded by Mr. Dirk Guidry. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. A four street lights, lights installations, removal, and activations, as per Mr. Dirk Guidry. Second. Seconded, Mr. Jess, Je, Ms. Jessica Doming. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? I would like to make a motion that we deviate from the regular order and go to 7A, please. We have a motion from Ms. Jessica Sorry. Doming that we uh, deviate and take up uh, item uh, 7A prior to uh, appointments. Seconded by Mr. Carl Harding. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? 7A is... A motion to discuss with possible action regarding a procedure for reappointment to boards, committees, and commissions. You want to make a motion that we uh, discuss this, Ms. Domingue? I would like to make a motion that we discuss with possible action uh, regarding procedures for reappointments to boards, committees, and commissions. Moved by Ms. Domingue. Second, Mr. Dirk Guidry. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Go ahead, Ms. Domingue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I thought this was appropriate for us to discuss before we um, make any additional appointments to any um, boards. Um, and before I discuss this and before I, I make any statements, I do want to uh, mention that this is not um, anything against our staff. Our staff does a wonderful job. Um, they do a fantastic job, and so this was this is not anything against them at all. Um, but. However, on March 14th, 2022, we sent out a uh, notice of expiration to some board members saying that their, um, they were, their term was expiring on 5-31-2022. Um, and we reappointed those board members, well, re we actually removed those board members and appointed new board members during our last council meeting. Um, we have a resolution that was passed in 2006 that says specifically appointments shall be made no sooner than the council meeting prior to the actual expiration date. Um, I did hear a council person say that, well, we always do it like this. Well, I think that moving forward, we need to do it the correct way and we need to do it the right way. Um, things have been so heavy um, the last year, year and a half, that you may get something in the mail and you may not send it in that same day or that same week. You may say, I've gotten until the end of the month to send this in, and so you may put it to the side, and then, but your intention is to send it in. I do think the intention for these specific people was that they were going to send in their applications. However, as we all know, life has gotten in a way, and they weren't able to send in that, and they were removed from boards um, that they probably should have been, um, they probably should have had their application in. For, and they really shouldn't have had their application until May 25th, um, which is, would have been where when we um, voted for them. So I would just like to have this discussion with you guys and see how you feel about this moving forward. Um, should we go ahead and just adopt the policy? Well, should we enact the policy that we already have um, moving forward, so meaning that some of these board members that we would appoint tonight, we'd actually have to hold off to appoint them until the 25th and moving forward it always be the meeting before that way this doesn't happen again and also that way if anyone else may have intentions of applying to a board they would also have the opportunity to do that and it wouldn't be filled with the first applicant that came in which was pretty much what happened in this situation is we filled it with the first applications that came in um, so I just want to know how you guys feel about this if there's any other discussion about it Miss Doman. Uh, okay, um, Mr. 
Michelle. I just want to make a point of saying that we did fill it with the, with the applicants who put their applications in. They happened to be the first applicants, but they were very qualified applicants who care about recreation and care about the recreation district that, uh, that, they, that they were appointed to. They were not put up simply because they were the first applicants. And, and I think we're, we're talking about moving uh, forward, am yes, I right? Yes, no, there's, so. there's no there's no going backwards, obviously. The, yeah. What's done is done. Um, and I do think that we did put up um, very well qualified people. Um, I just think that it was an injustice, the fact that the, the sitting board members did not have the opportunity to be, even be voted on. And so moving forward from this day on, I would like to ask this council that we do things that we've got in place and we say that we will hold off to vote on these, these boards until the 25th. I mean, realistically, we, we as council members, this is the one thing that we really have power over, and so let's do it right. Uh, and just a, a word of caution that was given to you by a leaguer council that on the agenda is actually not to discuss the vote that we had before, and so none of those people who were uh, appointed or not appointed or whatever are here today. So uh, if you want to explain what you're explaining to me, Mr. Abair, this is not on the agenda. Well, uh, let, let, let me defer. Let me, I'll defer to okay, you, you want, want to hear what I, I yeah. Uh, I, what needs to happen is, is the policy, okay, the charter says that the council adopts the policies and procedure and order of business. And if it's not, and if you don't do it, then you got to default to you adopt Robert's rules of order. You know you can't write, write out everything. But uh, it's been, it had, since 2006 was the last resolution, and it was just found today. Uh, when I called for, we had some issues come up about proceed about the appointment of members and stuff. So probably a resolution is a resolution. It's non-binding. It's not an ordinance. It's, it, it's as good as the time. It's as good as the time as you vote on it, and you could deviate from it. Okay, but I think it's good to have in place. You have you can't have a, a we want to we want we have to have a consistent policy. We just can't change every time. So what I would say is to get in, in to more bring it up to date is that we revisit and maybe for the next meeting, a uh, redraft, uh, a, a procedure, times have changed. 2006, for one thing, in 2006, you, people, as I recall, barely had internet, much less all this email. And it's just a different different system today. And I think, Suzette, things are moving so fast. So I think uh, what needs to happen is to, is if y'all allow me, I'll be willing to assist y'all to redraft this and circulate it to y'all, let y'all look at it, let you have input in it. We don't have to adopt it next time if you need more time to think about it. And, and then let's come up with a, a, a good policy, modern policy and procedure that, that everybody can, can agree upon is how to appoint these members. It's going to require a little, little thought into it so we don't run into issues. That's number one. Number two is, is I have provided uh, uh, the chair with a draft that I've drafted is how to handle these people coming up and how it should be handled, people that want to speak with cause. And I think it's, uh, I gave it to, 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 to the chair to look at first, and then I'm going to circulate it to everybody else to, and, to look at both of them. And, of course, that's, that's, that's another item that we don't, we're, that's not on the agenda. But we'll, 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 we're going to bring well, no, that I'm up. No, I'm saying it's part of this policy and procedure. Yeah. I'm okay. going to make it as all part of the same one, okay? Gotcha. Okay, um, Ms. Doming, are you finished? Um, I'm not quite finished. There is some backup that came with this. Um, this backup was not what was submitted with the with uh, the agenda item that I put in. Um, and after talking to Mr. A. Bear, uh, the the re verbiage on here that would actually actually be voted by the council to be have to um, change that verbiage. So we need to not have that backup in there at all. Good, yeah. Good. I can give you what I'm saying is I don't have to be, I'm not on the agenda, I'm not, a, I'm an advisor. Right. I, what needs to be done is it needs to be rewritten. I said I will rewrite it all, submit it to y'all, mm -hmm. y'all look at it, and if you want to adopt it, fine, if you want to make changes, fine, don't make me any difference, I'll give you what I think, mm -hmm. what I think, okay, and then after y'all take it from there. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mr. A. Bear. Mr. Babb, are you finished, Mr. Domain? Mm -hmm. Mr. Babbitt. Ms. Ms. Domain, I have a question. If you put in backup, who changed your backup? I can't answer that. Well, well I would like uh, to know. And, and again, we can request that um, 
That's you know. No, no. We're I think we need to know tonight who changed something that a council person put in as an item. Who has the right to change that council person's request and backup? I believe there was a misunderstanding. On whose part? Yours or on hers? We're talking about a staff issue, okay? This is between Ms. Domingue and staff. Um, uh, no, no, I don't think so, Mr. Gibbs. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I think, Mr. Batten, what you're implying is you're implying the chair did not put something in the backup in the agenda. And no, I'm you're not wrong. Oh, that. Uh, yes, what you're implying. And that's wrong. That never happened. I never talked to staff. Uh, and, and uh, you know, we, ha we, have, um, we have people in place that do these sorts of things, and I think that's, uh, that's out of order. Well, I, um, I think the insinuation is that staff did something wrong, and I will stick up for staff every time. And no, no, okay. no, I'm not saying staff did anything wrong, Mr. Babin. You, you, you know, this is the discussion we shouldn't have. This is not on the agenda. The agenda is procedures for how we want to appoint board members. Do you have anything on procedures yeah, yes, of how I to do. appoint board members? Yes, I do. Uh, and, and Ms. Domingue, uh, I'm not against what you're talking about here, okay? And I did say, yeah, that's the way we've been doing it for a long time. Simply because of Mr. Navy said it tonight, so did Mr. Gitter. They've been on here 11 years. Some of us have been on here six years. Others have just been two years. We've never had a problem like this before. No one has ever brought it up before, so evidently it was not that big a problem. But all of a sudden now we have a problem because two people didn't get in their information. And, and that's what I have a problem with. And, and we want to hold up some appointments tonight who people did it under what they thought was right, okay? I, so I don't think it's fair to hold these people up because I think they went under the, the, the rules that we set forth. Now, if we want to change this down the line, I don't have a problem with that, okay? If, if we want to make it that we do it the meeting before, but I don't think we need to penalize these people who went by the rules and regulations that we had set forth. So I, again, I'm not against what you're bringing up at all, okay? I want to get things on this council. I, I want us to do things to match the, the, the ordinance and the resolutions and whatever else that we have in here and, and get away from, from deviating from that. But, but again, the people that we have tonight did it under the premise that they were doing it right. Mr. Romady. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I agree with um, Ms. Domain. You know, we're not looking to go back in time. It's just when we discover that we're doing something wrong, just like we've had in the past couple of years, then we, we steer the ship back in the right direction. Um, and I agree with legal in that, you know, since 2006, it's probably time to look at it, and we should probably look for a couple more things that may have been done in the past that have not been combined, combined into a policy manual. Um, I had Rec 1 go through all their minutes for years and create a policy manual, and while we do a lot of things, procedural things, um, I think we probably could find some things. I know there was a policy manual being created in the past, and I'm going to dig that up and see what they had found at the time as well. Um, as far as what Mr. Babin was saying about some of the people tonight, I was looking over some of these people, and, and we're talking about unexpired terms, resignations. I think we can vote on all those people with this current resolution um, because they're filling, you know, somebody resigned and they're filling that unexpired term. One of them is an expired term. So the date is already passed. The only one in question would be B, and I can tell you that those three guys are going to get my vote anyway, no matter what we do. So um, I think uh, I would like for legal to uh, to give us a draft so we can take a look at it uh, to update this policy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Do you want to put that in the form of a motion? No, go ahead. Yes, I'd, I'd like to make a motion that legal would look at the policy of appointing people to the various boards and give us a, a draft on that for consideration. Second. Motion, Mr. Amity, seconded by Mr. Dirk Guidry. Continuing discussion, Mr. Navy. 
Yeah, that, that gives me a, a good stage now to, to conclude something in this policy that I've been wanting to do for a long time. So I want that in there also, Julie Ray Bell. Um, number one, and Deb just going to take up for the staff on this issue. I was staff that was in run this government, okay? Mm -hmm. I keep telling you all, you have two separate powers here, appointing and governing, okay? The appointing authority, you know who that is, Jude, you know who the governing authority is. The staff has nothing to do with this process. That's what gets me with the whole thing that's being brought up tonight. Nothing to do with the process. Mm -hmm. It's funny because these nine council members mm -hmm. make the decision. Mm -hmm. Governing authority, appointing authority. It's called government 101. Anyway, the other issues are, you, t you said, so you and I talked about this a long time ago. Our process are antiquated. The policy is there. You, you said, John, it would take me four terms to clear up a lot of antiquated policy that we have here. And th this is a perfect example right now, the one that you're talking about, 2006. But what I want you to include in there, in this process policy, is DNI, diversity and inclusion. Include that process in the, the board member selections also, okay? It's not, it's not, you, you could look up BI, you know what that is. Me and you talked about that before. So include that in the process of when we selecting board members so we don't exclude anyone. And that's just not, when I say diversity and inclusion, I'm talking about women and also, you know, anyone. Veterans, women, diversity goes a long way, not based on color. So I want you to put that in the process too, in the policy. But it again, it's us. We are the governing appointed authority, not the staff. So we're not, I'm not going to direct that to the staff. You know, I'm going to take up, I'm, I got to agree with Dan about I'm going to take up for the staff because that's not their, that's not their purview. That's not what they're here for. This is us. We did this, whatever happens. And you're right. We've been doing this a long time. We never had this problem before. I don't know why I'm, I, this is coming up with some of these board members when we can't even find board members. And you know that. We can't get people to be on these boards anymore. But we need to be a, a smarter process in our own policy that don't make any sense sometimes. It's antiquated. Mr. Michel. Thank you. Uh, you know, I've heard a couple of people saying something about what we did wrong and, and we want to go by. Uh, if I understood legal correctly, because it's a resolution, the fact that we deviated from it was not necessarily wrong. Is that correct? Well, I wish we, yeah, I, yes, okay. That, okay. That, that, that is correct. Yeah. Other than the fact that we must stay consistent and not be unreasonable and arbitrary. And I do, unfortunately, you, had a, you got a situation. You said never, you're correct, it never came up before because the reaction in the way it took place has never come up before. So the appointment came up different than what has been done in before. I'm not saying it was right or wrong. I'm just saying it came up different. So now is is that in, in, the, in the, the way things got to be sent in, and I'm going to have to work between Suzette and Tammy, and while you say it's not a staff issue, it's a start and stop issue. And so staff looks for something to look at to follow a set of rules or guidelines. It would be like following a recipe. So they're looking for recipes to how to handle this. And I'm going to get with Suzette and Tammy, and we're going to sit down and we're going to examine what the issue is, and we're going to write it in. That way when they're looking at this, they will know to tell people, you're applying for it, you got to have your application in by this time. This is the method you can send it in. If we don't get your application by this date, it won't be considered. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and I think I know where the problems lie. lie. So it's it's all how you apply something. Mm -hmm. Okay, they looking for a recipe, so staff is involved. Remember, staff is working on your behalf. So uh, so so they the staff works on behalf of the, of the council. So they, the staff has to have good guidelines with to go by, and that's what I want to try and up, update so we don't have these issues. Okay. Thank you. Okay, and um, and as far as consistency, I think we've been quite consistent for the last six years that I've been here. When we had somebody who put their application in uh, consistent with the deadlines for a given meeting, we voted on that person or persons. If it was just one, we held the others over. If it was enough to fill the seats, we filled the seats. We've been, I think, we've been very consistent. Uh, but and I'm not saying that we don't need to uh, to look at the resolutions and decide if we want to follow that and change the procedure okay uh to where we're following the, the resolution as it was written in 2006 or as it's going to be written so uh you know but that being said until we get something different written to maintain consistency i think we need to we need to continue the route we're doing until we make a change um 
on the um, on on a on a new resolution or on an ordinance. Thank you very much, Ms. Domain. Yeah, thank you, and Mr. Navy, I appreciate you um, you bringing that 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 up. What you just said about you know diversity and inclusion. Um, we unfortunately did vote off the only woman that was on that board. Um, and so, of course, I feel like somebody should, should stand up for, for that person. Um, you know, once again, this was not an attack on our staff whatsoever. Um, I just want to, to reiter reiterate that. I think, though, a trait of an effective leader is, as, is admitting when we made mistakes. And I can admit right now we made a mistake in this situation. And so I definitely want to rewrite it and re, um, uh, moving forward, not make that mistake again. Um, so I will apologize to those people and say I'm sorry that we made that mistake. Mr. Harding. I'm not a part of we. And we've been actually doing this, and we've been relying on our staff who's been overworked. Uh, it's already been acknowledged uh, that basically nothing has been done wrong. Uh, I think uh, we are in bicker a lot about a lot of things. We have basically uh, through uh, Mr. Amadi uh, created an avenue uh, that we can actually rectify the, uh, the situation. I also look at uh, what Mr. Babin had said that um, basically we are in a, in a fix whereas these people may have to wait whether it be fair or unfair. So uh, Ms. Ms. Uh, Doman also said that we are in the position where we can't fix something in the past that we have to go forward. And I think that we are in this meeting tonight and we have things that we have before us that we have to address now. So taking that in consideration, uh, I would like for my colleagues to be conscious of the mentality that they are representing to the people and then oftentimes when you uh, make accusations without calling names, that's what you have to own up to. Because whatever Carl Harding says, Carl Harding's gonna own up to it. You can go back to Carl Harding and I'll put my stamp on it. We don't need to be saying he say, I say, she say. If you have something to say up here, say it. So we can deal with it up here because guess what? It's gonna be another two weeks before I come back up here, even though I talk to all of y'all. But then let's settle the matter here, get it done, come to an agreement on that point on here. Just like Mr. Navy said, we are the governing body. We make these decisions. So before we leave here tonight, let's be on the same page. Thank you. Yeah, and, and, and I too want to defend staff, and I know we're, we're going to do a resolution, but you know, I trust uh, our staff people. Uh, they carry out what we asked of them when there is a problem they see, they do corrections to them. Um, of course, our resolution is not going to approve, I mean, we could put in a resolution when they send out a letter to these people, when do they call them, do they email them, do they, how, what, what words do they put in the letter, do they put the here or a there, I mean, we could actually approve that. N n you know, that all we rely to our staff and they do a great job, you know, we find issues. We had an issue with a uh, person who applied who didn't get their letter in time. So staff sends the letters out earlier. Well, then we get it in an issue that maybe people might not have enough time. Um, maybe, you know, people may, uh, somebody may apply for an open position before they say that they want to reapply because we sent the letter out too early. So. Staff is then changing the letter to get to let people know they have 14 days. And I think that's the backup. What you see is what uh, our council clerk did uh, in to address some of the issues. Mr. Yes, ma'am. Uh, no, because I am given information. This is this is the information in the backup that you have, and uh, you know, uh, Miss Sus Miss Suzette put that in there. And she's texting me, wanting to know if 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 she needs to call in, and I'm not I'm not going to have her do that. I don't think that's necessary. So I, you know, I I am uh, speaking on behalf of 
of uh, what that backup is. That is the new letter that's being sent out that says that people have to re reply within 14 days if they want to be reappointed. Um, they may have more time than that, but you know, uh, when we sent out the notice of appointment, if somebody uh, applies within that time it's advertised, it's put, it was put on our agenda for us to vote on at the next meeting. And it may be that in that two week period, that person doesn't send it in. You know, that has not been the case so far. We've never had that case happen. Order, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Yes, ma'am. This letter doesn't say 14 days on it. No, the, the letter in your backup, Ms. Okay. Stillman. But yeah. this letter that was sent to the applicants does not say 14 days on it. I, I, I'm addressing what is in the backup, which, which I think there, it, it, there was an issue and it was discussed. And I'm trying to explain what the backup in there is. And that is a letter that will be sent out unless the council instructs staff differently. So, uh, Mr. Babin. Yeah, John, you know, you, you made a statement about diversity and inclusion. We shouldn't even have to ask for that. That should be automatic in everything that we do, okay? Because that, that is the world that we live in right now. It, and the only other thing I want to, Ms. Domang, you, you made a statement that we uh, voted out a woman. We did not vote out a woman. She did not have her name on the thing. And there is a difference. That may be semantics. Yeah. But we did not vote her off the board. The, her name was not up there. So if her name would have been up there, she would have had an opportunity to do it. So that is inclusion and, and diversity. But, but uh, uh, again, I agree that we need to make this up to date that we need to get it into the 20th century, so to speak, okay? But again, I, it, in consistency, it's not against the law, what we've, the way we've been doing it, okay? Uh, I just don't think it's fair that the people that uh, went by what we've been going by for 12, 13, since 2006 should be penalized tonight. Do I believe that these same people would be voted on in, in May? Yes, I do. But again, they went by the rules that were set forth, and I just don't think that we should deviate from that tonight. Thank you. Mr. Michel. Okay, uh, and yeah, one other thing. Um, the, the, the fact that the only woman was not, didn't, did not put her application in and did not, uh, and as, as a result, did not get selected, uh, does, you know, that, that I was trying to make us sound like we're sexist, and I don't think that's the case at all. And just for the record, we do have a current applicant uh, who is female who will be up uh, for uh, appointment uh, to, to be voted on at the next council meeting, assuming all things go as they should. Thank you. We have a motion. Uh, Mr. Abair, did you want to add to the motion or explain? Yes, yeah, two things. Uh, number one, uh, Mr. Amade brought up a very good point about things getting buried. One of the things that, that could be considered be doing is that we actually put this procedure in an ordinance that way it's published, it becomes codified and it becomes part and that way it never gets lost. So don't get buried and it becomes a procedure as an ordinance. That's number one, no, after we get it to the point. Number two is, is if you're going to implement a two week uh, uh, plan uh, after going forward, not tonight. Tonight you can proceed as, as if you want to proceed as it is, but until we get an ordinance or another resolution prepared, we got to go by what we have. So if you if if you plan on, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, if you plan on wanting a two week letter sent out now, and that's what you you and staff desire. Actually, no, 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 staff is just asking them to let us know in two weeks that they want to be reappointed. I understand reappointed. that. But they don't, it's not saying you must. It's just saying. What I'm saying is, is that's, let me finish. I'm explaining what I think needs to be done. The council has to establish that procedure and approve it. So somebody needs to make a, a, a motion. Technically, a procedure is supposed to be by resolution. But somebody should make a motion to, for right now, until we get this resolved, if this is what staff's recommending and your council clerk staff is recommending would like to do it and you all agree with it, somebody needs to make a motion to implement what she wants to do. She can only follow what you all authorize her to do. She can't do that on her own. And so somebody's going to have to make the motion 
and the council's going to have to move to authorize or to proceed in that manner. So if somebody wants to make a motion to, to, di to dictate the words of the letters, go ahead. I don't know if we want to micromanage, but we can. Ms. Dramedy? I understand what legal is saying, and I, I think, you know, we've already got the motion on the table to have this revisited, redrawn, and we can get that taken care of. I don't think we need to change the letter. I think we just continue as we are right now until we vote on that. Yeah. Yeah. So Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just to be safe, we want to instruct the staff that they don't say that people to let us know in two weeks that they want reappointment. Right now, the letter says that let us know by the end of your term if you want to be reappointed, but we always appoint before the end of the term. So if, if we're dictating the staff that to not change the letter, then they're going to still send out the letter giving people to the end of the term to let us know they want to be reappointed. Mr. Navy? Okay, if I could write down, did you say that what you are asking for is to continue as usual as we do it until we come up with a process? Exactly. Okay, that's simple. That's, I have no problem with that. Yeah. We need to continue to you bring something tangible to us so we can vote on that. That sounds like what he's saying. I, and I, and I agree with that, but what I'm saying is they're asking the bill to do something else. What they want to do, staff wants, your staff wants to send out a letter to people who, is, is I understand it, wants to send out a letter to people who are already appointed advising them. No, 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 what, no, what, no. What is the letter about? No, I don't know. No, well, no, I, think, no. I think we all, do we understand what the letter is? We, we got it. We're good. We're yeah, good we, we, and we're going right. to just do as we're doing now until we come up with a process. Right. Okay. Yeah. Let's kiss it. Continue okay. as we go because we're confusing everybody. We're confusing the public with that. So let's okay. continue as we usually do, and then once we bring something back to us, we'll be cool with that. How about that? Okay. If that makes any sense. Thank you. Mr. Harding. Yeah, this makes any sense. We keep asking what our staff want us to do and what they recommend them. And staff is right here. We never ask staff, you know what I mean, to clarify it. Well. If, yeah, but. Well, yeah. If, if we ask asking the recommendation of the staff, that's what we should be doing. But <laughs> I, I think, well, I, I think I think we have a motion on the floor in a second, so I think we need to go ahead and and, uh, and uh, I'll call the uh, question. All in favor, say aye. Repeat the motion. Um, John, go ahead and repeat the motion, so I, I don't get it wrong. Thank you. Well, the motion was to get legal to present us with a draft on what the policy is going to be going forward for appointing members to the various boards. And that's a draft resolution or? The, the motion is to get legal. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let me present, let me clarify. Uh, let me present it and then y'all can decide whether you want it an ordinance to make it permanent or not. Okay. All right. All right. And do you understand the motion, Mr. Michel? Um, where are you? There you are. I understand the motion and the very fact that we did not include the motion that we're changing in the motion that we're changing anything means that we're going to continue as we are doing it right now until yes. such time. Correct. Yes, sir. And, and, I, and I have seconded that motion. Thank you. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All, any more discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Do we have a motion to go back into regular order? Motion to go back in regular order. By a uh, motion to go back in regular order, Ms. Domain, second to Mr. Call Harding. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Okay, we're going back to the appointments. Somewhere in this feet. Uh, a, Fire Protection District Number 10 Board, one unexpired term, Mr. Carol J. Bear Jr. submits application and resume for consideration. Mr. Babin? Yes, I'd like to make to open, close, and appoint Mr. Bear to the Rec 10 Board. A motion to open, close, and appoint Mr. Bear. Uh, do we have a second? Second. second to Mr. John Amity. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Um, Terrebonne Arc, three expiring terms on May 31st, 2022. Mr. Richard Watkins expresses his interest in being reappointed. Mr. Larry Pete expresses his interest in being reappointed. And Mr. Michael P. Alamo expresses his interest in being reappointed. Mr. Babin? Yes, I'd like to open, close, and reappoint Mr. Watkins, Mr. Pete, and Mr. Alamo. Motion to open, close, and reappoint Mr. Watkins, Mr. Pete, and Mr. Alamo, seconded by uh, Mr. Michel. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Item C, Terrebonne Parish Tree Board. 
one expired term and one vacancy due to a resignation. Ms. Christy L. Parker submits application for consideration. Mr. Michel? I'd like to um, uh, select Ms. Uh, Ms. Uh, open, close, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'd like to appoint Ms. Par Ms. Parker and hold over the second vacancy. We have a motion to, apply, to appoint Ms. Parker to the expired term and hold over the vacancy. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Do we get a second to that motion? Second. A, that was seconded by Mr. Danny Babbitt. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? A Veterans Memorial District, one unexpired term due to a resignation representing the parish president south of the Intercoastal and one expired term representing the Vietnam Veterans of America. And Mr. George Berg submits application and resume for consideration. For the, uh, the Vietnam Veterans of America position, is this? It's for the other position? Parish president's appointment? Okay. Mr. Babin? Yes, I'd like to open, close, and appoint Mr. George Berg as the representing the parish president south of the Intercoastal and hold over the other representing the Vietnam veterans. Thank you. We have a motion, Mr. Babin, seconded by, by Mr. Uh, Steve uh, Trosclair. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? <laughs> Council members requesting discussion of uh, Councilman Hardy, a uh, motion to discuss with possible action regarding the use of cameras to improve the safety in Terrebonne. Is that your motion, Mr. Harding? Yes, that is. Moved by Mr. Harding. Second. Second. Seconded by Ms. Domain. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Mr. Harding? Uh, yes, I would like to uh, have uh, um, uh, Officer O'Brien come up. Uh, that was some situations, and then we rather adequate it by some things. We want to address out, uh, something, and hopefully he can make a presentation and we can take action uh, after any question could be asked uh, from any council members, we would like to have them do so. Excuse me. On the order, Mr. Chairman, you, you skipped the end. Vacancy due to veterans boards and commissioners before we went to that. Um, did not read out the ones that would be in. You are right. We did skip that. Um, if you don't, Mr. Bobby. Uh, real quickly, uh, I'll go ahead and read off these. Uh, Recreation District 9 Board, one expired term on June 8, 2022. Library Board of Control, one expired term on June 24th, 2022. And the third one has asked to not be advertised at this moment by, uh, by administration, legal, and the legal counsel for the waterworks. And that was the Consolidated Waterworks three expired term on June 24th, 2022. Uh, hold on, Miss. That's two of the three expiring terms. The one that the other, there's two members who uh, are going to uh, that we're addressing right now uh, because of uh, their need. The other third term, I understand, is somebody that is not expiring, but be, would be up for a reappointment. So I'm going to make it simple. The two, the the representative, because the. Members of the Waterworks District serve by district. The representative for Mr. Dirk Gidry's district, I'm asking you to withhold on that. The representative from Councilman Bobbin's district, I'm asking you to withhold on that. And we're going to address that in another manner. Leave that open for right now. And a motion is not necessary, uh, uh, but unless the, third, the couch. The third one, you can call for the vacancy because, it's, as I understand, it's a reappointment. That one. Uh, and uh, the legal opinion will be in plenty enough time before the June 24th expiration Who, who's date. The, wh whose district is the third one from, CJ? I mean, Tim. Wh whose district? Who's the third one? Well, it's Brown. Who? I think it's Brown. Who's district three? Okay. Well, then the district three can go forward. You can call for that reappointment. All right. Okay. So we have one open and we're hiring and uh, we're uh, appointing. That's open for appointment, and the other two we're, we're not advertising at this time until uh, pending legal. Um, let's move on. 7B. To 7B. Okay, we're back here. Come on, Mr. Bobby. Yes, Captain Bobby O'Brien, Homer Police Department, Administrative Department. At this time, I'd like to present to you, I have a PowerPoint and repeat that we're ready. Well, Operation Peace 
in reference to police eyes against criminal engagement. We actually had some audio that I was going to read all this stuff to you, but obviously we'll leave it up, leave it up there. Obviously, the community that hosts cr uh, crime cameras often see a reduction in crime. When uh, felony crimes do occur, criminals are more likely to be arrested quicker, uh, confess, and implement others and plead guilty, thus saving hundreds of investigative, prosecution, and defense man hours and millions in tax dollars. Witnesses and victims are less likely to um, relieve tragic memories in court. At-risk juveniles are more likely to be identified and helped. Violent offenders uh, transition more quickly into the state penitential system. Go again. There it is. The idea to have video surveillance of Terrebonne Parish streets and waterways that were experiencing high crime rates was a concept originally developed by Homo Police Department patrol officers. With the increase of everyday citizens uh, not waiting to get involved due to fear of retaliation, officers utilized video collected from nearby homes and businesses, realizing that seeing an incident as it was happening can be more effective than a statement from a witness. Although some success came from this, it also had its drawbacks. Some homeowners and business owners simply did not, uh, did not know their passwords to access their videos, did not set up the systems to record, or did not want the officers to enter their homes to retrieve the videos. The Homo Police Department was able to secure a small grant which allowed the purchase of cameras which was placed in different areas around Terrebonne Parish which assist in solving crimes, identifying suspects, vehicles, and locating stolen property. With some camera systems outfitted with flashing blue lights on top, large departments, logos of the Homo Police Department, uh, these cameras are designed to ensure that there are high visibility presence would inform the public that their areas were under police surveillance. The goal is to use these surveillance cameras where to create a visible crime detour in communities that have experienced a high incident of violent crimes. I have a couple of videos in reference to how the crime cameras of X or the Operation Peace cameras have allowed us to advance our level in reference to identifying situations. Um, so we grabbed a couple of snippets of videos and issues in reference to utilizing uh, home cameras also in reference to individuals that just walk through neighborhoods pulling on vehicle doors and things like that. Uh, this one right here was actually at the home of police department right in the backyard and the guy had an AR-15 strapped around his back and waiting for officers to either come in, come out, uh, of the facility itself and the cameras allowed the officers to strategically uh, inter interact with the individual eventually making the arrest with uh, no shots fired or anything like that um, as you can see this one right here look at it very closely tell me in the video what is the crime did you see it <laughs> we're going to pull it up and sometimes we only look at cameras in reference to what is the obvious when obviously sometimes what's captured in the background is the actual serious incident or so like this so at this time, I would like to answer any questions or any concerns for which you may have. Uh, obviously, we have placed several cameras uh, with local parish government dollars, road lighting district funding, and grants that we, will be able to, we were able to accomplish. The police department and operation peace program, as well as Terrible Parish Consolidated Government, and many different members of the council, we all together have been putting cameras throughout Terrible Parish since 2005, and people don't realize that. Uh, one of the things in areas that we pretty much have been doing and seeing is that Obviously, with Katrina, COVID, and many different companies that are out there, um, some of these companies are not in business today, and which creates a huge problem with us because we have camera systems that need to be updated, camera systems that need to be worked on. But if those businesses are not there, sometimes uh, different cam camera companies only worry about the camera systems that they have, and other companies will not work on those. So I've also spoken to Mr. Mike, and Mr. Mike has helped me out in reference to making contact with sometimes the utility companies, being parish government, Ernie and his group has been very helpful for us. And anytime we've asked for something, they've been out there to try to help us to resolve those issues. Sleeka, we had a little rough spot in the beginning, but then they've jumped on board with us and very helpful in helping us. Uh, energy, we still have a little problem with energy in reference to connecting some cameras due to the fact that we have some cameras that's out there for six, eight, two years that we're still trying to address. Why don't we have power? 
and these camera systems are out there because you as council members have asked us, can you put a camera out there? Will this be able to help to stop uh, many issues or problems or crimes that we have in the area? I know that uh, Mr. Babin, Councilman Babin, he asked it in Dirk. Uh, we put one down in Bagel Canal down there and that actually kept catch the individuals that are dumping tires and trash and everything else. Uh, so those cameras will be very effective if we can get power properly to help it to connect all the way across. I know Councilman Babin, when he was asked us in reference to put one at the home up boat launch over there because every weekend it seemed that somebody was stealing somebody's boat, taking tires or breaking into their vehicles. But since we put the camera out there, we have zero incidents at that particular location because the general public knows and sees that those cameras are there and they know that we're watching. Uh, Jessica, Councilman uh, Jessica and uh, Councilman Harden, we have put cameras in many of their locations. Uh, sometimes it takes a very long time of getting some of the cameras, especially since technology and everything that's happening. It's, uh, we waited for a camera system. It took us six to nine months to get the parts in. Uh, sometimes the boxes or the containers, it's taken quite a, a while even though we're talking to the general public together and trying to convince them that these uh, camera systems will come along, it just seems that it's taken an extremely long time. So at this time, I'd like to take any questions or any comments or anything like this that you may have. Uh, yes. Um, I know that there are a number of cameras out, but then um, um, actually, um, me personally, I would like uh, with l all law enforcement and this is an introduction to uh, the criminals, the criminal element, the safety of the people that's in Terrebonne Parish. We have a problem with crime. Uh, we want to prevent crime. We, want, we don't want to let off any uh, details about law enforcement and how they operate and stuff like that. Um, when I went to you, uh, one of the problems that we had was the fact that dude, we have to update our cameras. We have to get the power to our cameras. We have to get the funding to our uh, cameras. Uh, our population uh, is shifting. Crime is shifting. So we have to make the adjustments um, to uh, how, how crime is taking place. And we want to make sure that crime coming into Turbo Parish, uh, people that's committing acts and leaving Turbo Parish, uh, uh, so we want to address the issue, and technically, I think across the board, this is my objective. Uh, before uh, coming here, I tried to make a con uh, uh, contact with you. There was uh, uh, something that happened uh, in my district, and um, it's, it's, it's rather tragic that we have things like that go on in the middle of the daytime. And I'm saying that I do not want these criminals to get away with nothing that they're doing, especially in the middle of the daytime with violent crimes, with no regards to life, property of the citizens of Turbon Parish. This is the first stage that we trying to, uh, that I'm trying to ask, because that's the first step when I asked you and I talked to the sheriff in reference to that. I asked for the assistance from uh, Mr. Mike Toops even Miss uh, Darlene Williams, who's sitting in the audience right there, she requested some things that she spoke to you too. So it's crime is just not just uh, in one area. And I'm, I'm actually, this thought that I'm coming here to get my colleagues to understand that one of the most important things about this is funding. And whatever question that they have to ask you to the deter crime, that to help prevent crime, and, and help with the prosecution uh, with the criminals, I, I can yield to, to them. I just want to bring it to the table. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Navy. So let, let, me, let me just, and I, I appreciate what Carl is saying, but we have this thing already implemented. I'm not sure if a lot of people are aware of what actually was going on. Danny Babin and, and Dirk ourselves is on this council with Alonda Williams, who's actually implemented this program, this camera program. Uh, we started something very unique, putting cameras in a lot of areas. Uh, Bobby and I, you know, you and I worked directly with that program to have crime cameras all over. And I mean, they, we flooded the areas. Unfortunately, the storm also uh, damaged it. Mr. Dove has actually given the approval of this budget coming up 
to put more money into the lens. I think it was lens at the time that we had called it or whatever. And so we're going to have funding uh, to spread those crime cameras out. But this actually exists, and we, we did this. So I, I just want to make sure Mr. Uh, Carter also knows that this, the, Mr. Dove had put this in the, the budget for this. In fact, uh, the former councilman that Jesse Domain took, uh, she was involved in the process too. So it, it's, a, it's a program that's existed and, and existing, and um, I mean, and it worked. I mean, you actually provided some, I wish you would have had that statistical data that you had provided to me years ago uh, that showed the crime going down because of the cameras because Chief Coleman would tell me, hey, Mr. Nate, because of the cameras, we could locate things, we could find things, you know, we just don't tell people where those cameras are at. Uh, and we have access to those cameras. You know, we actually at one time can actually see ourselves the way you set them up. Uh, but they was antiquated, you know, and you wanted to upgrade and get a different process with it. But the parish president have said that he's going to definitely put that money that I asked for on the wish list to, eat, you know, to add additional crime cameras uh, to the parish for safety purposes. But it actually, it, it was fantastic. And I think that's something that definitely is needed. But this is something that we, we, we got in place and I think it's going to work very well. So it was all in all the districts. I mean, definitely in District 1 and District 2, because Alonda was definitely on, on board with that process. But I, I, I appreciate you, because you've been doing this for a long time with these crime cameras. Well, that's what I would call them anyway. And you, and you changed the name to Peace. You know, so I, I appreciate that. But it's, it's existing. It just needs to expand more. And it needs more funding. That was the biggest issue that we had. But Dirk Gidley was, and, and Danny was very vital with that process too. So. I want to tell you, thank you for all the work that you have done, uh, my wife is probably, for all the work that you have done uh, with that process because it, it really worked. And, and I wish Chief Coleman would have been here too because he could have told you how he would always call me about that, you know, how the cameras were working when, they, when crime happened. So right. thank you for all what you do, man. Well, just as uh, what Chief Coleman would say to all of y'all in reference to it, the cameras helped us with the solvability of solving crimes. Uh, because we are able to identify that and reduce the total number of man hours uh, that we would have to use out there in reference to trying to solve this, uh, whatever the situation is. Uh, I remember our first, crime, uh, first camera that we put out there, which was on one of the government buildings, when if you remember the old post office downtown Homa was like a bar room. Um, within less than a week, we captured our first homicide in reference to the individual person that shot the guy that was standing on the sidewalk. And if it wasn't for the camera system, we would have never knew it was the person in the back seat of the truck that actually fired the shot because we was able to see the muzzle flash. So the cameras overall, and not only reducing, but helping us to solve crimes much more faster and, and the statistics in reference to what's happening with the community, it, it's a humendous help to us. And then obviously, as I showed, some of y'all having access and upgraded technology to be able to pull this stuff from the phone because I know um, Councilman uh, Domain, she would call me and ask me about certain uh, areas and we we're able to pull up vehicles and problems uh, for which we would uh, identify to be able to send officers to be looking for whatever vehicle was causing reckless operation, speeding or something like this. Some of the parks and recreations have jumped on with us and we've had, we was just recently at the Gray Park, uh, we saved that park almost 6,800 bucks because they ripped the gates off. And if it wasn't for the cameras that we just stole from a grant that the parish had applied for, we would have never known who. And then that would have been money coming out of that district's budget to be able to pay to replace those gates. Um, and obviously the sheriff's office helped us with this. I know that uh, I believe a member from the sheriff's office could come, but they're looking at also license plate reader camera systems and everything else that's out there. It's a good combination. If we can overlay as much as we possibly can, we can help make uh, Terrebonne Parish a much safer place for anyone that comes and visit, you know, in our area. And obviously if they become a victim, we'll know who it is because we'll be able to identify them as Councilman Harding is saying. And, and I tell you, the solvability rate, that was the thing that, that I'm telling you that Chief Coleman and you was very vital for the community. And it was a lot of crime solving with those crime cameras. And also, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think you was the one also suggested even putting them on like floodgates and things like that years ago when flooding areas you can determine, you know, and that was fantastic too. So, well, from the sheriff's office, Terrebonne Parish Sheriff's Office deputies that actually assigned to work in the levees and down in the bayou areas, we get a tremendous amount of complaints in reference to boat thefts uh, and all things that are happening on the water. So 
we're actually utilizing cameras to be able to also not only identify facial and vehicles that are in the area, but also boat recognition to take it to another level. So hopefully we can identify some of these individuals that are stealing boats, you know, because I live down the body. And that's a huge concern about mine, just like anybody else that lives down there. And it's pathetic that even you think in the rural areas that we wouldn't have as much crime or anything like this, but they're taking just as much as inside the city. Well, again, I thank you for, you know, your vision. I mean, it was, it was excellent working with you, but this was a, a fantastic idea that we all came up with. And Steve, I'm not Steve, I'm sorry. Dirk and Danny, I appreciate you all too, and Alonda was very vital with that. But he is going to put more additional funding in those cameras. So I just want to make sure you know that. Yes, sir. Thank you thank very you much. Ms. Domain? Yeah, thank you. And, uh, you know, you and I have been working in some areas as well. And I can't speak for other people's district, but um, there's been a huge uptick in crime in District 5, especially since the hurricane. Um, and so I would like to see these, these cameras be put, placed everywhere within the city limits. Um, and I know we're getting a lot of money coming in, so if we need to put more money in the budget, I hope that administration will be able to do that too because uh, they said something about $500 million, and so it seems like there should be a little wiggle room to put some of these crime cameras in um, with some, some of those monies. Um, because it is part of quality of life and it's part of moving forward uh, as a parish is that we can feel safe and our families can feel safe and that, um, you know, we don't have to worry about those <coughs> things. And if a camera's going to stop that, well, then let's put them everywhere. Um, and I really appreciate all the work you're doing. And hopefully we can get that, that camera up over there in Homa Heights because that's one of those problem areas for me right now. And so hopefully we can get those parts in soon. So I really do appreciate what you're doing, Bobby. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for that. And also, just as uh, Mr. Mike and as well as many of the council members that I spoke to, as we put a camera in one particular location, the problem sometimes moves from that location and moves over to the next location. It's almost like fighting an anthill in your yard. You can kill it in the front, and then it'll be in the backyard. And next week, it's back to the front. So by having a concept of where we could possibly put it at major intersections or uh, air target areas within a community that we overlap, that's going to help us to hopefully drive it out of our community in our neighborhoods or identify it much more faster so we can have much more effective arrest by law enforcement. Mr. Trosclair? Yes, thank you, Bobby, and you're doing a great job. Um, several years ago, we, had, we were having a discussion and, and presentation about the cameras, and there was a discussion about uh, a program and interface between our neighboring parishes' cameras and our cameras. Uh, is that something we still trying or uh, looking to do? We, yes, sir. Or we actually, have we implemented it? Yes, yet? sir. It's actually implemented, and that if you've been through the tunnel, you may have seen my big box that's in the entrance of the tunnel. Uh, that's one of the systems that's actually linked statewide, and it's linked into all the license plate uh, camera systems that we have between all the different parishes that have them. So it identifies stolen vehicles, it identifies switch plates, it identifies in reference to amber alerts or anything like this that we're looking for. Uh, and that now we're connected into the state, and so we are the lowest point for the state in reference to the tunnel because the amount of traffic that goes through the tunnel and people going back and forth Obviously, it's a huge, huge valuable resource that we're going to be able to have to be able to reduce the number of vehicles because every one of your districts have been hit by individuals that have been stealing vehicles, stealing parts off of vehicles and things like this, as well as individuals that could be doing other illegal activities that if we know about it, we can target it. And then obviously not only does it ping on us, but it also pings on all the other areas. This past weekend, uh, shortly after we was able to get our system up and running properly, uh, Terrebonne Sheriff's Office picked up a stolen vehicle. Lufush Parish Sheriff's Office picked up another stolen vehicle. And then we had that incident in Assumption that involved a stolen vehicle. And that was from the systems communicating to all law enforcement agencies to make us aware, you know, giving us that little extra edge because sometimes we just don't know if that vehicle in front of us is stolen or not. I, I, that's what I want to, uh, I thought we was on board, but I just wanted to bring it up and make sure. Uh, now we do not have any plate readers. We, you know, basically cameras that we installing are, are plate readers. Yes, sir, we do. That's the reason that camera that's in the tunnel is. Okay. It was funded by the Louisiana Department of Insurance, and that it's a license plate reader as well as video. We've also put one in Mr. Gidry's district, Councilman District, uh, Councilman Gidry's district, which also not only takes the video but also captures the license plate. Okay, the license plate is good, but obviously the video is better because now I'm able to see 
more things with the camera. And that play, play rate of more high tech yes, camera, sir. so it, it gives you a lot better resolution. Yes. And I knew we were getting any. I didn't know we had got any in yet. So thanks a lot. Y'all doing a good job. Mr. Harding. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, I, I spoke with you. It's not to take any kudos from anybody else. That's that's the whole thing. We're trying to improve the system from where we are. We're trying to get more funding to you. Uh, I did speak with the sheriff, and the sheriff says uh, he's he's with the whole nationwide thing with his uh, his plate recognition. Uh, I sp spoke with you during the time of COVID. We had a concern about people who had masks. We were trying to get that type of cameras, even though you have a mask on, you have face recognitions uh, that you can have masks on. We have to make that upgrade. We've had constantly had the, the conversation in reference to how to get more funding to you. And I, we, you know, we've been working on it about a year or so. You know what I mean? So uh, that's what I'm trying to tell my colleagues up here. We've, we're trying to support law enforcement, and, but we want to give them the funding so they can do their job. If we handicap them, you know what I mean, and we short of manpower, Let's give them some assistance, you know what I mean? So that's, that's my point for bringing you up here. I asked you the question, and the presentation came here. It wasn't nothing against nobody previous. It's just the fact that how we make the improvement. Because guess what? We, <laughs> crime is on the uprise. So therefore, we want to deter crime in any way we want to possibly could. So thank you for coming up here. And uh, uh, Mr. Babin. Mr. Babin. Just one final thing. I, I mean. Mr. Guidry and I and, and Mr. Trosclair, we have all the outlying areas, okay? And we have some licensed plate readers in Mr. Guidry's district and in my district because you might think it, it's not near as bad as some of the homicides. I'm not, but we have a lot of people that are going dump trash down the bottom. And these licensed plate readers can not only get them, those people may have committed a homicide somewhere else. So everything we do, it should be to the highest tech that we have right now. We shouldn't be putting in low tech anything in this parish because the criminals are getting smarter every day, so we have to try to stay ahead of them. So, Bobby, you all doing a great job. I, I mean, look, I want Big Brother looking after me, okay? So thank you. Thank you very well, much, Well, thank you all very Brian. much. And again, each council member, please take in consideration of your district. Talk to the parish administration and everything else because obviously together we're going to make our whole entire communities a much safer area. Between the sheriff's office, it's not just the Homo Police Department. It's all of us together that's going to make Terrebonne Parish a safer place to stay and live. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Announcements. Any announcements, uh, parish president, Mr. Mike Toops? Um, parish council members, Mr. Babin? Yeah, uh, I just like to take this opportunity to say that yesterday was a great day in Terrebonne Parish, especially for Council District 7 that I represent. The uh, Bayou Community Foundation over the last eight months has been able to secure $1.8 million worth of private money, not a dime from parish, state, or federal government. And we're in, we've repaired about 80 homes and are billing building 10 new homes, and yesterday was the dedication of two of those. It's also been a commitment of another million dollars to have the Mennonites come back down in October and build 10 more homes. And in a, yesterday, it's not official yet, but the $250,000 start for after those 10 homes. So again, this is all private donations. It, it, it's wonderful that we have these groups of people out there that are wanting to invest in our communities, okay? And that's not to say that government is not doing things, because they are. The government works so much slower than what these private entities can do. So it, it was, it was quite, it's quite rewarding to, to be part of it. And, and uh, like I said, it was a great day for Terrebonne Parish yesterday. Thank you. Mr. Harding. Yes, uh, to, uh, to follow up uh, with the cameras and stuff like that, um, we went in arrangements and we, we rather, um, we have a date uh, for the Eagle Wright Baptist Church, um, uh, three, uh, 3590 uh, LA316. Uh, we are, are going to address the uh, crime on May 14 uh, at 2 p.m. at the Eagle Wright Baptist Church. Uh, we're going to look at crime the effect crime have on our community. 
and the effect that uh, crime has on family. Uh, so stay tuned. We, we're going to work with uh, trying to get the progress out there. We spoke with several law enforcement agencies that are going to be out there, and we want to get the public to have their input, and we want to make sure that the public understand that law enforcement and, and, and government is out there for their safety, working for them, and making a better community. So thank you. Mr. Michel. Uh, thank you. I just uh, I want to point a couple of things out. Uh, first of all, anyone who wishes to address the council is best advised to contact the council office and put the information you would like to discuss on the agenda uh, because they're, they're trying to rein in things so we can talk little and hear less from you. But, but if you call in, you will be able to uh, speak on that item. And I also recommend that you not be too specific on what you want to uh, speak about. Be a little bit general, so that way if something comes up that's not specific on your request, you will be able to continue to speak on it. So so uh, please keep that in mind if you would like to speak to the council, uh, and, and you'll be given more consideration in that manner. And also, uh, with the school year coming to a close, I'd like to... Uh, uh, to wish everybody who's testing uh, with the annual te uh, standardized tests uh, the best of luck on, on their testing, uh, especially since so many of them, uh, some, of the, um, some of the school days are now coming further behind the testing because of Hurricane Ida. So, uh, so I, I wish all of these students luck and, and, uh, and thank all of, the, all of the teachers and everybody involved in the education for their efforts. Thank you very much. Mr. Amity. Thank you, Mr. Chair. With uh, springtime always comes floods, and uh, kudos to the St. Mary Levy District because they're going to be bringing on the Bayou Shane floodgate. And what that's going to do is that's going to help the northwestern and northern parts of the parish from backwater flooding from the Chafalaya getting high. It's going to also help all the way up to Plaquemine through Pierreport and Stevensville. So uh, for those of you that have been battling those issues with the, uh, the work that the parish has been able to do with the Hanson Canal uh, pump station, the um, Elliot Jones that's under construction, and now this floodgate, um, I think Gibson will start drying out. So uh, hopefully it works as planned, but uh, for those that keep track of that, know that uh, it's coming online and will reduce the, uh, the risk of flooding this spring. Thank you. All right. Any more announcements? Seeing no more announcements, we have a motion to adjourn. Motion adjourned. Mo a move by Ms. Uh, Deska Domain, seconded by Ms. Carr Hall. All in favor say aye. aye. We are adjourned. Thanks, guys.